Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard. Thank you for joining me today for this uh, 50,000 subscriber live stream. It is awesome to have you all. Appreciate everybody that jumped in. This is very cool. My name is Richard. Thank you for joining me today. Looks like we, uh, see how many people we got in here. Subscriber live stream. It is awesome to have you. Yeah, I'm mute myself. <laughs> so what's up, everyone? How are we doing today? Looks like we got alternative inverts in here. Eight legs, eight, uh, four wheels, pet rock and roll. What's going on, pet rock and roll? How you doing, Amy? So we got a couple, uh, let's see who else we have in here. Chaos Critters, what's up? Glitch Sixel. Um, alternative inverts, what's going on, man? Um, so what we'll be doing today, um, or what I'll be doing, I guess, is I just got a box in from uh, FedEx. And it was some squirt, or not scorpions, some tarantulas that were sent to me from uh, Tarantula Haven. And so I thought, um, since he did a video on, like, pretty much how he boxes those up for shipment, I thought it'd be fun to, the next day, because he just released that video yesterday. Today, we'll, we'll unbox the, the box he was putting together. Uh, so we're going to be working on that. Also, we've got um, a few other things. I got a couple stickers to give away and, uh, you know, rehouse these tarantulas and, and, and do that kind of fun stuff. Um, it's been a crazy day. I uh, actually, I forgot. I was working on a video to release today and then I was going to do the live stream later and I forgot that I had both a doctor's appointment and a dentist appointment today. <laughs> so um, they, they were doing some, some pretty crazy stuff to my teeth. So if, while you're watching this, if you start seeing a lot of blood, going on <laughs> don't worry uh they just were i don't know it was painful and i'm still bleeding so <laughs> hopefully it'll all be good uh what's up nikki good to see you in here you the multiverse guy what's going on tarantula arc how you doing so yeah it is uh it is awesome to see all you all in here let's see we uh we got 141 people watching right now uh that is awesome and if you're not catching the live stream you're you're watching the replay uh, thanks a lot for checking it out. It should be fun. We're gonna we're gonna have some fun tonight. Uh, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell to turn on all notifications. If you uh, want to be alerted in the future, so you don't miss any live streams, I try to do it at least once a month. Sometimes it's like once every six weeks or something. Um, but yeah, to to definitely do that. Uh, everybody, hear me? Okay. Looks like everything is working. I didn't screw anything up. I had a couple hours to set everything up. I don't see anybody saying I can't hear you. Um, so I, you know where to start. Let's see. Hello, Rodolfo. What is this? I'm trying to read up. Is he lagging a little? I hope not. I mean, I'm looking at my stream. Let me check the. Am I lagging? I don't know. <laughs> I hope not. Let me make sure I got. Yeah, everything's set up correctly. So I don't know why I would be lagging. Um, but yeah, everybody can hear me. That's good. Awesome. Um, so we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get to unboxing. That's uh, that's the big thing. So I just wanted to say thanks to uh, Tarantula uh, Haven for setting that up. Uh, really appreciate that, man. So thank you. I, I'm excited to get in and look at these. Uh, also have um, a podcast coming out in on Thursday. I'm going to be doing. Uh, I sat down and had a conversation with Danny Damon from Tarantula Keeper Cards from Keeper Cards, and uh, we talked about just pretty much the backstory to Keeper Cards, how he came up with the idea. Um, you know, and discuss the hobby in general. And uh, it, it, we had a good conversation. So I'll be uh, uploading that on Thursday. So make sure you check that out. I'm going to give you a little bit of a clip of it here. Um, but I did I did work on this. Uh, it's like the new intro for the Exotic Pet Collective podcast. I figured uh, I, I kind of threw it in one of the, uh, I think it was last week's video. I did one with Tarantula Heaven. And I uh, wanted to show you guys. I don't know if uh, the audio is going to work or not. So you guys will have to let me know if uh, you can hear the audio, but here it is. Yeah, so that's it. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if you guys could hear that. Oh, Gilbert, we got a a dollar ninety nine super sticker from Gilbert. Thank you so much, Gilbert. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, do, do, do. yeah, you can hear it. Awesome. So I did have this set up correctly. That makes me happy. <laughs> I'm still learning to use this new software, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, that's just like the, the quick little channel intro. Uh, when you're listening to the podcast, you can't actually see it. You can only hear it. But, you know, it, it's still fun if you're watching it on uh, YouTube. Uh, let's see. There's also, um, I wanted to 
I wanted to show you guys this. There is, uh, if, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Fatal Fangs, um, but uh, Bug Realms is a, uh, another YouTube channel. He is doing a, uh, it's essentially like a feeding competition, a tarantula feeding competition. Uh, they had one, I think, like last year. Maybe it was a little bit longer than that. Um, but we're gonna, they're, they're doing it again. And uh, I, I'm not involved with it directly. Like I'm not a judge or anything like that. Um, but I'll tell you about it. We'll just we'll just watch this little uh, channel trailer they made or you know event trailer i guess would be a, a good way of describing that so you guys check it out and uh pet rock and roll says fatal fangs yeah it's, it's going to be exciting they're, they're pitting different people together like you, you they'll take their best feeding clip and they'll put it up against somebody else's best feeding clip and uh whoever wins like the judges will see which one they like the most and that person moves on to the next round and like a bracket system um so this is this is kind of like their, their little channel trailer or event trailer i don't know how to describe it As you saw a message from Dixie Norma saying that uh, the volume was really low, and that is possible because I turned the volume down on that clip really low because it was super loud in my headphones. <laughs> I don't know how that translates to the live stream. Uh, but yeah, be sure you guys uh, subscribe to Bug Realms and check that out. It's going to be really exciting. And I think, uh, well, I don't, I don't think, I know, the, uh, the winner is going to be going up against me. Um, I'll take my best feeding clip and put it up against the winner, and we'll have a little competition, see which is one the judges pick. Uh, winner take all. Actually, I don't think that's it at all. I don't think I win anything <laughs> either way. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be fun. I am looking forward to it. Uh, and you know, all those channels that you just saw, you know, make sure to check them out um, as well. It's it's gonna be pretty cool. Um, I was hoping that Alex may join the stream, but I don't see him in here yet. Uh, so, but I got this box from him. It's right here. Oh yeah, got a uh, just came in from FedEx this morning. Uh, you sent it overnight, and I'm I'm really excited to open it up. And we're gonna we're gonna open it up, uh, take everybody out, and uh, put them in their new homes. I got some enclosures set up over here. I'm not entirely sure what all he sent me. I know he was gonna send me a uh, uh, what was it? A Brazilian Brazilian blue dwarf beauty. That was what was discussed, but I don't re recall any numbers. And he said there might be another surprise in there as well. So <laughs> check it out. Actually, I think uh, he was actually talking about it in his video, which i think i have queued up right here so this will, we'll, we'll watch this little clip and it'll kind of lead us into the unboxing um yeah so uh and thanks again gilbert for that sticker i appreciate that uh, i'm going to try to answer a lot of your all's questions um as i see them kind of flying through uh, if i miss them i apologize you can just throw it in again or if you do like a super chat like gilbert did uh, that'll highlight it and it'll be at the top of my screen so i'll be able to see it for sure <laughs> so um but yeah let's uh let's check out this this little video from alex that's a that's a weird uh screen that i have it on at the moment so on to today's order of business and that is shipping tarantulas i'm shipping tarantulas to richard of the tarantula collective if you recall in a previous video he had sent me some florida bark scorpions and um he his female had a bunch of babies and he ended up with more than he knew what to do with so he asked me if i wanted some of course i said yes because i have some already and i want to increase the amount that i have in my communal 
So anyway, um, when my Delicophili diamantinensis had babies, he expressed interest in them. And I thought, well, what a perfect opportunity to repay the favor. And I told him that I would send him some. So I'm sending him some of my Delicophili diamantinensis slings because he said that he only had one. So uh, he, he wants to have more than that and I will send him some. And I'm also throwing in something a little bit extra that I think he's gonna like as well. So a little disclaimer here. I am not a vendor. I do sell some tarantulas here and there too. So, yeah, you know, that's privately. Uh, that's that's what, what he was talking about on his video. So I'm kind of excited to see what was in here. Um, you know, he had it all boxed up. He did it on camera. So make sure you go to his channel and check that out. Um, and subscribe to him. He's a great guy. Um, I'm I'm very curious to see what what all he has in this box. But just just so you know, uh, I'm not playing around. That's the box right there. <laughs> what I do. So he, uh, it, 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 the box that he is playing with on camera is the box I have right in front of me. So it's a, uh, it, it's probably like 24 hours. Um, and we'll, we'll, we're gonna open it up right now on the live stream. So um, you know, hopefully it goes smoothly. I don't foresee any problems, but you know, you never know. Um, so I guess uh, really nothing to do at this point, but then, you know, open this box. <laughs> Uh, and he's probably going to demonetize me now. A uh, <laughs> copyright strike for using his video. <laughs> uh, so, what are you guys saying in the chat? What's going on? Uh, some German. Hello from Germany. What's up, Alex? Tease, tease. Nice to see you. Uh, Flying Spire. Oh, thank you, Bet Rock and Roll, for dropping that link to Alex's channel down there. I'll also, uh, if you're watching this after the live stream, you can just go in the description. I'll have links to Bug Realms and Bet Rock and Roll and. Um, you know, pretty much Alex's channel, everybody that, that we'll be talking about the live stream will be down in there. Uh, so you can you can check that out as well. But here is the box. I'm going to move my camera down slightly so you guys can see it. I went ahead and pulled off any uh, mailing information so nobody's showing up at my house. Actually, it wouldn't even be my house. You'd just be showing up <laughs> where I work. Uh, but here it is. Uh, this is the box, so let's um let's get it open. Let's see how well he did. Dustin says, "Captain Redbeard, thanks a lot, man." Mathis, I'm glad you finally were able to keep uh, to catch a live stream. That is awesome. I need to pay attention to what I'm doing so I don't cut myself. Yeah, my wife actually had surgery on Friday on her foot, um, which is you know was very painful. They had to, they had to remove something. And, uh, essentially like break her toe and reset it put a pin in there so she's kind of been uh, i mean she, she's got to keep her foot elevated for the next five days so i've been taking care of her and uh and i just you know it's made everything pretty difficult as far as like getting videos and stuff done oh we got a new channel member brett barrett thanks a lot for joining the channel man i appreciate that when you're a channel member, you uh, get access, early access to videos when I get them uploaded in time. You also get uh, exclusive videos and access to posts that nobody else can see, you know, unless you're a channel member or in Patreon. Um, so here we go. We've got we've got two little boxes here that he's taped together. And let's see what else we have. I'm going to guess nothing. Some more styrofoam. Oh, and a heat pack. Good did get pretty cold here last night and i'm actually going to reuse this entire box uh, he recycled it i'm going to re-recycle it and i'm going to send him some uh scorpions i just had oh my um devil striped devil tail wait devil striped tail scorpion something like that i can't remember <laughs> it had a bunch of babies and i've got some arizona bark scorpions and stripe bark scorpions that i'm going to send him so let's see what what do we got here we've got two unlabeled dram files which i am going i'm not even going to guess what they are i'm thinking that i, I really don't know <laughs> we'll figure it out and then in here oh my goodness we've got i should do it where you guys can see some straws that i assume the little spiderlings are in i'm trying to do it without smashing them so yeah that's that's four five six i just happened to grab six enclosures so that's awesome works out very well so uh yeah i am pretty excited oh we got another new member uh louisa in the sky with tarantulas thank you so much for becoming a member here on youtube i do appreciate that support 
Uh, Son of Blue says, what's the straws for? Well, if you watch his video, this is actually how he was shipping the small spiderlings. So uh, as you can see, there's um, paper towel in both ends of this. And in between there is where this, the small baby tarantula is. Um, so we got a little sling in there. And I'm going to have to pull up my little rehousing box. So because these, these D-diamond tests, and, oh, he says it. Alex has such a good tongue. Like he can pronounce words so well. <laughs> I have a, uh, a West Virginia hillbilly tongue. So um, the D-diamond Oh, you know what I'm trying to say. The Brazilian blue dwarf beauty. They, uh, they're very quick. And I'm, I have a feeling that's what's in here. So we want to make sure that they can't escape and get underneath my computer. Or there's a lot of cameras and stuff on the table right now. So I got this, uh, this handy little box. We'll just move these over here. I think you guys will be able to see what it is I'm doing. Uh, just so you know, I'm using uh, creature soil in these enclosures. I like to use this a lot for spiderlings. Um, it, it holds the humidity or holds moisture really well. So it's, it, it provides good humidity for spiderlings. Um, so, I mean, that's good. And then for enclosures, I wasn't exactly sure what he was sending me. So I've got a few large dram vials. Um, and then I've got these like, I think these in particular I got from Jamie's tarantulas. They're uh, just kind of their, their basic spiderling uh, tarantula enclosure. You can use them for arboreals. They work really well. And I need a larger desk. I got too much stuff on my desk. And then these are uh, just little AMAC boxes I get off of um, containerstore.com. So I uh, drill some holes in there. I gotta, you got to use the smallest drill bit you can find, though, because these slings can be very tiny. So you want to make sure they're not able to escape out of there. Um, so we'll do that. All right. I literally showed your room to my girlfriend to show her what my dream room looks like. <laughs> That's awesome, Yenzo. Hopefully uh, she's still your girlfriend and not your ex-girlfriend. Alternative invert says, damp substrate arboreal style enclosure logo. Oh, he's not even talking to me. He's just answering somebody's question. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you doing that. So what should we do first? Should we do the straw first or one of the dram vials first? Uh, I'll let you guys decide which one should we do first. Just leave your co comment down there in the live chat and let me know what, what you guys want to see first. I'll try to carefully peel these off. We got one dram vial, one straws. Oh, I'm so nervous doing this. I really don't want to smash anybody. We got another straw. Green. I think that's the straw. One more vial and then straw. I feel like you guys are, the straws are winning here. So we, uh, we'll go ahead and do one of the straws first. Let me just gently put you down. This is very nerve wracking. All right. So this has got very small holes. This is the one I actually did cross ventilation in as well has some top ventilation and this is one of the downsides from using amac boxes you just uh the slightest bit of uh, pressure or you drop the lid once and it can get that crack in it it's still usable you put a little bit of hot glue kind of seal it up in the corner but uh, they do break really easily so they're, they're very inexpensive but uh, you, you do have that risk that they're going to break and i have everything i need except for some tweezers so let me grab those real quick Luckily, they were not far away. All right. Is there any way for you to be louder? You're so quiet. I'm quiet? Yeah, I could probably turn up the volume. Does that help? If that is better, please let me know. What is a good room temperature for your tarantula? Uh, I keep mine at like just basic room temperature, like uh, 72 degrees. My basement down here is usually between 70 to 74 degrees, something like that. Uh, for my spiderlings, I usually keep them in a uh, spiderling, like the nursery. I've got a video on how I built that. Um, but it's essentially a 20-gallon aquarium or 15-gallon aquarium on its side. Uh, and, and then I kind of insulate it and put some heating pads on the top of it. So it's like radiating heat down that stays probably back around 78 degrees. So 
I've got the thermostat on. I think right now it's set to, so it doesn't get any warmer than 80 degrees. So, all right, so we've got one of these little spiderlings. And he did a very good job packing that in there. And that is a little, I don't even know if you can see that on camera. Can I zoom in? And you can see all the way back. This is very difficult to do. There it is. You can see that little tarantula way back down in there. So what I think I want to try and do is just essentially like push it out. I'm going to, I'm going to push the end that has this uh, paper towel in it. I don't know if this is going to work or not, um, but I'm going to try and push and see if it'll just come out. So hopefully that'll work. Let's see if I can maybe do this where you guys can see a little bit better. Wrong way. All right, raise the camera up a little bit. So far to do this. Oh, we got another channel member, Felina Hog Hoggard. I hope I pronounced that right. Thank you so much, Felina. I do appreciate you becoming a member. Uh, let's make sure you're still in there. Yeah, still in there. All right, so we're slowly pushing. Actually, I don't feel too safe about that. I'm just going to pull. Oh, goodness. There it is. I can get it into focus for you. Look at that little beauty. It's kind of hard to tell what it is, but I, I assume that is the uh, D diametinesis, just kind of based on its coloration. It's kind of gray and blue. I'm just going to set that down. Uh oh, paper towel. Okay, it's fine. And I am just going to add a little piece of cork bark in there the lid on before it gets away because these things can be super fast and you, i don't know if you can see it but it's it's still just kind of hanging out right there on its little piece of paper towel chaos critters we got a new member thank you so much chaos critters i appreciate you joining the the group that is awesome and durazo stone sent a five dollar super chat so thanks a lot for that I appreciate it. All right. There we go. That is number one. That, man, that is a well-fed little sling, too. You see that uh, at abdomen? Nice and large. We probably fed him right before right before he uh, sent him out. So put this one somewhere safe. And uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and do another one. This time I'm going to put a little piece of cork bark in first. Now I just essentially just get like a large piece of cork bark and then I just break off little chunks. So I mean, there's I don't think anybody's like actually selling tiny pieces of cork bark, but you can make them yourself. Buy a, a saw, man. You know, like a Dremel or a saw will be your best friend in this hobby. All right, so pulling this off. Spiderling is definitely down in that tube as well. So it's hanging on. We'll try just pulling this out. See if it'll come. Does not look like it stayed attached. Nope. So it is just inside there right now. So I am just going to try and convince it to come out unsuccessfully oh there it goes and it's staying on a straw 
So again, these are from uh, Tarantula Haven. He just sent me four of these little beauties. All right, there we go. And they're just safe and sound on its cork bark. Just kind of hanging out in here. Now these guys will uh, web up a whole lot. So I'm not worried too much about uh, providing any kind of uh, water dish right now. I am, uh, I'm just gonna drop in some sphagnum moss and let them do their webbing. And then I can just uh, drip water on the web. Uh, but you know, other species, I'll, I'll put a little tiny. water dish happened all right <laughs> a stream lag or something all right so uh let's do number three yeah, i actually had uh my mom was in town the past four days she came in friday and was just left this morning and uh, I was actually going to do a video with her. Um, I was going to have her feed some tarantulas. And uh, if I show you behind me, oh, geez, this is not working. Uh, I actually have everything set up to film a feeding video with her. Uh, we just did not have any time to really get it done, mainly just because I was so tired. So we'll have to do that next time she comes into town. Uh, but this one is starting to come out of its little hole, and it's hanging onto the straw. that in focus for you. Let's find the focus frame. There we go. There's another little uh, D diamond tenesis. This one looks much thinner. We'll need to give it a cricket. If I can get it to just go on. There we go. It's worked very nicely. So, so far, this, is, uh, this has gone pretty smoothly. I had no issues. Of course, I may have just jinxed myself. Yevis Wiseman says, how can I get a membership? Well, all you have to do is hit that join button down below the video. Uh, it'll be a little button uh, on a YouTube video. It says join, and, and then it's like $1.99 a month or something like that. There's different levels, but I think that's the cheapest one. You get one of those little icons next to your name. We got Mike Rios. Rios? I hope I pronounced that right. I'm really bad at pronunciations. It's, I mean, not just like tarantula names, like people names as well. And then I try, uh, you know, at least once a month, sometimes not as frequent as that, but I try to, you know, list everybody's name that's a YouTube and Patreon member. Uh, I try to get all those supporters kind of like in a credit section at the end of the video, just to give you a shout out and say thank you. Um, sometimes it, it does not work. Or YouTube algorithm. All right. We just got the uh, last bit of paper towel out of there. Put this down here in case it comes running out. It's right there on the end of the straw. We just took off. All right. So let's see if we can just get it to back right up onto the cork bark here. Back on up, little guy. There we go. Out there it is. Just grab that cork bark. There you go. All right. So that's four down. So thank you so much, Allie, for those sweet little tarantulas. I am excited to take care of them and watch them grow. There, it's, it's, I really like the GBV, like the green bottle blue. So this tarantula is uh, it's, it's like a, a dwarf version of that. This one's pretty cool. Now I'm not sure what we even have in here. He mentioned uh, Salmopia species because he had some, he had some spiderlings, and it's like I got a bunch of them. I can send you, send you one or two. So that might be what this is, but you never know. Okay, 
it's focused. Oh man, my my gums are throbbing. I think what they they did was they call it a debridal, something like that. There's a spiderling down in there, and that looks that looks pretty large. I don't think that's a spiderling. So I think we're gonna set this up arborally and figure out what size it is. Like a little bit of that creature soil. Dump that in here. What does your mom think of your tarantulas? She, uh, what was that? Who said that? Uh, KX Dents, Candace, Candence. I don't know how to say your screen name. Um, I mean, she's kind of used to it. And I, you know, I kept hamsters and uh, little frogs and geckos and anoles and stuff like that when I was a little kid growing up. So she had a turtle. <laughs> You know, she so she's she knew that I was always into these kind of uh, exotic pets, I guess, not your normal pets. Um, and like last night, she was just down here, kind of hanging out, uh, walking around like it was a zoo, um, just kind of checking them out, asking questions. So she's not freaked out by him. I actually did a video with her, uh, not this past Mother's Day, but the one before, where we talked about. I think I was essentially just letting her handle. I think she handled us the snake and uh, gecko and a couple other uh, couple tarantulas. Be sure you check that video out. All right, this is the exciting part. Yeah, I gotta say, Alex wrapped these very well. Very impressed. Now this is a Salmopius. I am very nervous. And it's just gonna decide to bolt. So we're gonna kind of do it this way. Oh, that didn't work. I don't know if you guys can feel the tension. <laughs> there we go. We got another new member, Phil Travis. Thanks a lot. Susan B. Moscato is awesome to have you as well. My chat wasn't uh, bumping up. So we're slowly moving. I think it was where you guys can see. I don't know why that comment. Let's get rid of that comment. There we go. Oh my goodness. Look at that beauty. Whoa, and she's gone. Now this enclosure is too small. So we're gonna have to get a larger enclosure for her, for him. He is hiding back here. Let it be there. Uh, actually, I don't even have one nearby, so we're just going to try and get it into this enclosure, and I'll just have to rehouse it later. I did not expect it to be that large. So thanks a lot, Alex. That is awesome. Oh, he's not cooperating. Come on, buddy, we're in a live stream. You gotta cooperate. Just crawl in there. No. And it's out. Little bugger is quick. <laughs> oh, it may just actually crawl right in there. It'll just crawl right in the enclosure. That'd be handy. No. no. There we go. All right. So it is currently in this enclosure. And that's probably like, if it was in that size enclosure, I would probably be doing a rehousing because that, uh, that is just a little too small. But I've got some larger enclosures in my garage. So I'm just going to grab one of those and uh, get that set up. All right. 
seems to have gone intermittent now. I'm having a hard time keeping up with the chat. <laughs> Behind the scenes right here, boys. Yeah. So um, that's exciting. That's a beautiful trench. I still got one more to, to unbox right here, but I think I'm going to try and get some larger enclosures to do that. <clears throat> that was uh, that was not as easy as I had hoped it would be. That guy was. It could have gone a lot worse. I mean, those those things are known for being like super fast. So, uh, it, I guess in comparison to other uh, rehouses I've done, that that one that one rather smoothly. <laughs> so, uh, what's going on in the chat? Get Brit, get bit brand. How's it going? It's awesome to see you. We got another new member, Corey Potter. Thank you so much for joining, Corey. I hope I didn't miss anybody else. Let me know. I'll just kind of go back. Uh, Susan Moscato, thank you. I think I called you out, and that's as far back as it'll let me get. All right. Um, let's see. Go back, go back. Mike Rios, yeah, I gave you a shout out. So I think that's it. I think I'm catching up. Chaos Critters, uh, Durzo Stone, awesome. Sent uh, five bucks Canadian. I appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's what's going on there. I want to, you know definitely thank tarantula heaven or tarantula haven for that i do uh, i do appreciate that and there's also as i mentioned i'm doing a podcast with um uh danny damon that'll be out thursday uh and did some uh some keeper cards kind of talking and then he sent me some i don't know if you guys have seen this i showed it in my last video um they're here somewhere is this it right here tarantula starter pack this is the tarantula starter pack yeah, it's it, it's not more than a foot from where I am right now. I just can't see it. Oh, see it. There it is. And they, they come in these, these, oh, that's a microphone. They come in these cool little bags. I think the first one I got was just all green. This one's like half green, half blue. Um, and I, I was filming some cool B-roll of it the other day. So I'm going to drop that in on the... Uh, the little podcast video version but he's got all kinds of uh different cool species in here a lot of these are like the chroma depelma sign of pubescence big fan of me of mine um let's see what else does he have non dechromatis is in here homothymus violus sepes pamphibetus antinos uh, then he even has some cards that are uh, like this cards on uh cleanup crew like essentially springtails um a little information on springtail, some information on whole, um, molting, uh, some information on like how to keep your uh, substrate for different types of enclosures. So it's all, it's it's not just tarantulas. There's all kinds of cool information in there. Um, so you know, big shout out to Danny. Make sure you check out that podcast because it was a really interesting discussion. Like uh, I, you know, I see him a lot on the tarantula tubers Saturday night takeaway uh, that like uh, alternative inverts and pet rock and roll and. You know, all those guys do every Saturday. Um, he's been he's been on there a lot. But it was nice just getting to talk to him and, and you know, pick his brain as to like not just why he's making these cards, but where he accesses all the information and how he decides what to put in the card and whatnot. So yeah, it's it's pretty cool. New member of the yeah, Danny is now a new member of the Tarantula Tuber Saturday night takeaway. That's pretty neat. Um, but he's got a um uh, Kickstarter that's going on till the end of the month. So if you want to get in on this new pack, uh, you join the Kickstarter, uh, you pay up front, and then it takes a few months for everything to kind of get sorted out and go into production. And then they mail them out to you. I think in the podcast, he was saying that he's looking for like February or something like that. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it should be going, uh, it should be pretty cool. I think you guys will like him. You'll be excited. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, oh, I also got this. I don't know if you guys um, know much about cameras at all, um, but this lens just came in the mail today. I'm pretty excited. It is. It looks weird, like it's a funky looking win lens, um, but it's actually a macro lens, which is um, videos or pictures that are like you know, zoomed in really close on the tarantula or, you know, whether, whatever it is you're taking a picture of. Or this is, um, this one's special though, because it's both a wide angle lens. So you get like this huge field of view and a macro lens. So it's like, you can, instead of, you know, like a lot of times, like if you go to my Instagram, you'll see some macro pictures that I took and it's like just the tarantula's eyes or something. Cause you're like, you gotta get really close to get 
uh, that really kind of define close-up picture. Uh, but this one is like, you know, really have a wide angle view. Um, so it's, it's going to be pretty cool. I, I haven't even got to play with it yet. I turned it on, made sure it works. Um, and like, kind of like, it was just playing around with a little bit, but I haven't actually recorded anything or, um, taken any pictures with it, but I'm pretty excited to do that. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's really weird. Like I got that lens and this other, this probe lens, they're made by the same company and they're really interesting lenses, but it's one of those that's, uh, it has a very limited kind of use. Like there's, there's really only a few different few places you could use something like that effectively. And it, what I'm doing, like, you know, I'm taking pictures and videos of tarantulas. It's like right up that alley. So it's almost like they're made just to do that. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of excited to, to play with them. Arachno boss says that's dope is, I don't even know if I can do that. Can you raise up the volume? I don't think I can raise up the, like, this is, this is max volume. I don't know why it's not uh, getting any louder. And maybe I just need to talk louder. That could be it. Chad Browder says, uh, what's up, Richard? I got your sticker today. That is very cool. Glad to hear that came. I sent a bunch of them out. I think uh, I, I did that. Um, what was it? It was a uh, uh, fundraiser. That's the word I'm looking for, for Harmony House. They uh, they do a lot of, um, they're like a children's advocacy center. They work with a lot of um, physically and sexually abused children and kind of help, you know, get their life back on track and, you know, provide counseling and all that other kind of stuff. And uh, they, you know, they do a fundraiser every year. Uh, their big one is like a Halloween monster bash. And I've been helping them out, trying to raise a little bit of money uh, the past few years. And they weren't able to have the the monster bash because of COVID. So it was like they couldn't, you know, have the little party where everybody comes out and, and you know, does all the things that help raise money, like auctions and raffles and all that kind of stuff. So they had to do it all online. So I, you know, uh, essentially it was like, I think it was like three buck donation. And I'll send you a tarantula collective sticker because I had like a bunch of them. And I was like, well, I have a hundred that I can send out. And we got a lot more than a hundred people that sent money. So I think I ended up sending out like 150 stickers. Uh, it was, it was pretty cool. Um, so you guys, we raised like over $12,000. I think I sent them, uh, 12, 1,250 bucks. So thank you all, everybody that contributed to that. And I really appreciate it. That was very cool. Um, yeah. Somebody says, uh, where do you get them? Where, uh, if you're talking about, what are we talking about? What are you asking me? Hey, Keeper Cards is in the house. Good to see you. <clears throat> That's not Keeper Cards. I know I just saw a message from him. There we go. We were just talking about your Keeper Cards. Um, and that, in case, since you're here, I'll go ahead and tell you that uh, that will be up uh, Thursday on the Exotic Pet Collective channel. So, yeah, um, be sure you're checking that out. Where did, where did the chat go? Alternative inverts for mod. Sure. Uh, how do I do that? Let's see. Alternative inverts will make you a moderator. Bam. <laughs> Throw a couple different moderators on there so you can help me uh, take care of the chat here. So we got uh, Brett Barrett sent a super chat five bucks. Thank you so much for that super chat, man. I appreciate it. My H. Maculata just made herself a burrow last night, which is a new behavior for her. Do you think she might be in pre-mold? Uh, it's very possible, but I mean, I, I have three, three or I think I have three H. Max, and they all have burrows. <laughs> That's just typical behavior for all of mine at, at all times. Like when I first rehoused them, put them in their uh, juvenile enclosures, they all, you know, initially webbed up the top, but as soon as they had that kind of like, um, that that home base kind of like they, they webbed up a nice little funnel and then they went straight down and, and burrowed and then just turned it all into a huge dirt curtain so it's like you can't even see them um but yeah i i, I think that's that's typical behavior i don't know if it will signify they're in pre-mold or not but they, they're just settling in making uh everything sound you know getting comfortable i guess is what i'm trying to say let's see that soundboard what what are you saying there, Get Bit Brand? For those who are interested in tarantulas and live in Princeton, West Virginia, I suggest checking out tie dyed tarantulas in Princeton, West Virginia. I am actually in, uh, I am also in West Virginia. And I have talked to the people at tie dyed. They're, they're, 
a nice couple. They're very cool. I wanted to go see them actually. And I was down that way. I was down in Beckley, West Virginia. It was, I mean, it's not like real close, but it was a lot closer than where I am uh, currently. So, uh, but I wasn't able to because of all this COVID stuff that happened. I can't have any more merch. I've got too many other groups. Okay. I'm just trying to keep up with the chat, see what you guys are up to, what you're saying. Any recommendations on my second tarantula? I guess it depends on what your first tarantula is, my friend. Hey, dude, I sent a super chat minutes before this one. Did I miss a super chat, Arachno Boss? I'm going back in time. Hold up. I'm going back in time, Arachno Boss. What'd you say? Susan? I don't see it, Arachno Boss. I uh, must have missed it. What was it? What'd you have to say? Leave a comment. I'll be sure to read that. Drawzo Stones says, I'm getting a Postalitharia Metallica. Any tips? I've seen your video on it. Uh, your channel has been very helpful, but just thought I'd ask you here. Um, yeah, I've put pretty much everything I, I know, most of my experience in that video, and nothing's really changed since then. Um, you know, if you're getting a spiderling, just make sure you give, uh, give them plenty of places to hide. Um, they, I know they're beautiful and you want to watch them and see them but i definitely uh i know that they really appreciate having plenty of places to hide so whether it's a cork bark um maybe some you know sphagnum moss on the ground it can use to kind of web into its funnel uh maybe some like fake plants you know stuff like that so it can really uh, uh really feel safe and secure the react to the five dollar donation that wasn't a soundboard mm, i'm so confused man All right, I'm trying to see if I can find out what Arachno Boss had to say. He wrote, Richard, what's up? I missed most of this due to court. Hope you are well. Oh, man, sorry. I hope everything went well in court. Um, that's never fun. But you didn't miss much. We just uh, unboxed some tarantulas and um, rehoused them, and everything went, went fairly smoothly. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that... Uh, and you can always go back and watch it. Like if you miss the live stream, you know, you can always go back and um, watch it in the replay. It takes like an hour or so after the live stream before it gets up there, but it's definitely coming. So thanks for that, Tarantula Arc. I appreciate your help. All right. What else you guys saying? <clears throat> Tom says, I'm getting a brachypelma or a vicularia soon. Any tips? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, watch my video. I got videos on all kinds of brachypelma species and a vicularia species. Um, and I'll tell you exactly how I keep them or how I keep mine. You know, any of my videos, they're not, they're not like um, prescriptive or anything like that. You know, it's not like uh, this is the only way to take care of them. Really, all it is is I'm just showing my, my experience, telling you how I do it. And, uh, you know, take whatever it is I say in my video and, and use that, you know, as just one piece of the puzzle, because your, your situation is going to be different. Your species, you know, the, where you live, the environment that you're in is, is going to change how some of that works, you know. So uh, I'm in, you know, I live just right down the road from a creek and I keep everybody in a basement. So my humidity levels are always very high. Usually I'm trying to lower humidity levels. Um, but if you're in the desert or you got on like a second or third floor, you're running your heater a lot your humidity level is going to be really low. So some of the, you know, the approach you'll have to take, um, you know, it may be a little bit different, but, you know, just you use one video kind of as a launching point and then you go and check out two or three different videos and websites and get a bunch of other people's information and kind of like, you know, mix it up to kind of put it all together and, you know, what, what applies or what doesn't apply, just kind of let that fly and, and use what works best for you. Uh, let's see do you speak to exotics layer much um not at all actually i've, I've never spoken to them um, i don't even know how to, how to get a hold of them <laughs> richard there is a growing demand for you to join us on the tarantula tuber saturday night live after party shot shot shots <laughs> i don't even know what the after party is that's something new i need to i need to get back it my life's been so crazy lately i haven't even really been able to watch very let alone join but yeah i will definitely have to uh to get in on that 
at least you know hang out with you guys but if it's like an actual after party in person there's no way i'm not flying across the atlantic ocean uh let's see hector says uh, have you ever tried to make your own glass enclosure also in bioactive enclosure will the light pass through the acrylic top i doubt it and i'm trying to find a solution i have never tried to make an acrylic or a glass i've never tried to make any enclosure really by myself they seem so readily available at least i have access to them so everything i want is like i can it just seems like it'd be a lot easier to buy it than try to put it together um maybe in the future i could try something like that but uh as far as um the bioactive the light passing through it may be different if you had uh, uh some kind of reptile in there that needed a specific intensity and frequency of you know like like uvb light or something like that they may cause problems uh if you listen to my podcast um a couple weeks ago on the exotic pet collective channel i actually spoke to tarantula crips i'm, I'm wearing their shirt right now <laughs> they uh they make acrylic enclosures and that was one of the questions i asked them was will will it block certain you know uh wavelengths of light that would be needed for a bioactive enclosure uh, what they told me was they don't believe so um and what i can tell you is that i have one two i have three or four 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 bioactive enclosures that are in acrylic enclosures and i have had no issues with the uh, light penetrating enough to make everything grow like yeah, you just have to go in and cut plants out so i don't think that's something you, you really need to worry about um so hopefully that answers your question Well, let's see what else we got arthropod ambassadors in the house um what do they say to pass the light through you could you use led stripes inside the enclosures well that's a possibility as well but i use the um uh i've used both the acrylic enclosures like ones i've just kind of made from like acrylic boxes that i bought off amazon that are like for shoes or boots or something and drilled ventilation holes in there i've also used um dream go plastics and tarantula cribs plastics enclosures and with just a led or fluorescent uh, grow light my, my plants have been thriving in there so i haven't had that issue but again if you're talking about snakes or you know any kind of reptile that needs specific wavelengths of light at specific intensities i i can't speak to that i do not know um all right so what else we got going on uh, Vicky B says a friendly hello from me in my El Periabana, or perhaps that was a threat post. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that was probably a threat post. My El Periabana, uh, actually molted out male. So I've, I've got a male that's, uh, just kind of hanging out right now. Actually, I, I, I have a, uh, breeder that wants them. So I'm going to be sending them off to, uh, do some breeding here very soon. So that's kind of exciting, but I, I don't see, I don't like, uh, a lot of people do like the 50 50 loans which you know is cool that might might work for some people uh, you find somebody like you have a male they have a female and you send them your mail and if it's a successful egg sack you'll split them like 60 40 or 50 50 or something like that um i have tried that a few times in the past and and i don't i just haven't had great experiences with it they're like oh your your mail got eaten like you know no pictures or uh, video or pretty much anything just you know take my uh just take my word your mail was eaten they didn't breed and of course then like you see them on facebook six months later selling slings it's like i can't prove that that my mail wasn't eaten and you didn't just get a mail from somebody else but it does seem slightly suspect so i i, I stopped doing that um so if i have a mail i either just give it to the person like as a gift like here it's yours um or i sell it you know for cheap trade stuff like that um so i got i got somebody set up to do that so it'll be going out and and hopefully uh, have a successful breeding for them all right recommendations for true spider vendors in the u.s uh yeah there's plenty um bugs in cy cyberspace he's got some cool like trapdoor spiders and stuff like that um Tom Patterson is probably the most well-known, most respected. Um, and I don't even know if he has a website, though. I think you just got to, like, find him on Facebook and send him a message, and he'll send you a price list. Uh, he's, he's really good. Other than that, I would I haven't bought a whole lot. Those are, like, the people that I've gone to. So uh, if you guys are watching and you know of any true spider vendors, please be sure to, to leave some comments. Help this person out. 
Megan would like to know. What kind of true spiders are you looking for, Megan? Okay, let's see. We got another good. Uh, what size of enclosure would you suggest for a Damon diadema? Better in centimeters. Oh, man. You know, we're, so we're backwards here in the U.S. I, I don't know centimeters. Let me pull up a uh, conversion chart. Uh, it, I don't know what size uh, your your D, uh, your tail is whip scorpion. For those that don't aren't familiar with that species, um, they're arboreal, so they they need height, uh, and they also molt hanging upside down. So you need to have enough depth in the enclosure that you're going to have something at an angle that they can hang off of and and molt successfully. What I use is actually a ten gallon aquarium. Um, just take like a ten gallon aquarium, I put it on its end, and then use acrylic and kind of actually i show it in my video on that species and uh let's see um 10 gallon aquarium measurements in centimeters oh, that'll work that is it's about 50 by 20 by 30 centimeters and that's like more than enough room you could probably go a little bit smaller than that like 40 by 20 by 25 centimeters but um i went with the 10 gallon because they really can spread out quite a bit when they get those those feelers going and i i see it it's you know it's like two o'clock in the morning but it's definitely kind of crawling all around its enclosure and exploring so i try to give them as much room as i possibly can so hopefully that answers your question Let's see, do you keep Pamphibetus Antonius black? I keep mine slightly damp, and she's digging all the time. Every day the interest of her burrow keeps moving somewhere else. Uh, I don't have that specific species, I don't believe. I have a Pamphibetus Anton Antinuous. Antinuous? I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, it does not have black in its name, but that may just be a common name difference. Um, and they burrow a lot. Mine doesn't change its burrow, but it definitely digs deep, so... Um, is it maybe too damp? I wouldn't say it's too damp though. Uh, Pamphibeta species do kind of like it damp. Um, I would just make sure it's not swampy. You know, like if you can pick up the substrate and squeeze it and water comes draining out, then yeah, it's probably too damp. Um, but if it's just, you know, slightly damp, they, you know, a little bit of moisture, they definitely like that. what we got here the acrylic will block some light as will glass but because t's requirement for light is minimal the animal will not be affected plants will not plants will be but minimally i agree jeremy yeah like i said the uh the my t's blondies are in bioactive enclosures and it's just it's insane how fast those plants are growing do you have any recommendations on sellers in europe you know that's um not my strong point. I would I would definitely reach out to alternative inverts or pet rock and roll eight legs four wheels. Um, you know those are all uh, they're in the UK or Europe. Uh, Gar over at Rachnatubes. Now my website thetarantulacollective.com. I do have some like a list of a bunch of breeders, uh, mainly in the US, but I do have some from Europe and some from other places in the world. And essentially people that I know and trust in the hobby that are like, hey, these are a good dealer in our country. I put them on the website as a recommended uh, breeder or dealer. So you can always check that out. It's the tarantula collective.com backslash resources. Uh, I got a whole list there. Sometimes there's even, um, what's the word, discount codes. <laughs> I don't think I have any for any of the international breeders, but there's definitely some discount codes if you're in the U.S. So what else we got going? Trying to read some more messages from you guys. There we go. Alternative inverts coming in. Sellers in Europe, the Spider Shop, Spider Planet. Yeah, those are I think all of those are listed on my website as well. So that's doubly recommended. Now we got some more. Um spider shop is excellent to buy from uh yeah i i it, it, i just stopped looking at those european tarantula dealers websites because it will drive you crazy because they have some amazing species available and uh they're much cheaper than they are in the u.s in some cases some cases we get them 
we have a, you know like a fauna pelma species we seem to get those cheaper and have a wider variety than they do richard uh, do you just use a spray bottle for keeping your slings well and hydrated or is there something better to use uh, that one lesbian now that's uh, uh there's two things that i use um mainly my spray bottle but i'll put it on like a stream setting so it's not just like mist uh it, it's like and, but it's also not just a direct stream it's kind of like a little spittering spattering thing uh, and i'll use that to kind of water it down and just like very lightly uh, that way it gets some water droplets on the side of the enclosure or on the web and, and then some you know will soak into the substrate uh, something else that i've used before are they and, and there's a, a very specific name for them that i can never remember but it's it's like a squeeze bottle that has a little kind of hooked uh, nozzle that comes out of it so yeah, and then I'll, I'll, I'll use that but yeah um other than that i mean that's pretty much that's pretty much what and, and honestly i think i use a spray bottle more than anything just because it's right there it's readily available i'm using it for all my other tarantulas and stuff so it's it's probably what i use the most uh hopefully that answers your question i'll get bit brand just sent a super sticker thanks a lot for the support buddy i appreciate that uh, Nick Schroeder's asked, is a diet, diet solely consisting of mealworms for a juvenile Nicaraguan curly hair tarantula healthy? I mean, I'd, I'd say it's as healthy as a diet consistent of just crickets or locusts or, or anything like that. Um, I, just because of the situation I'm in, pretty much primarily use crickets to feed all my tarantulas and will occasionally mix it up with like a roach or a mealworm. But I know a lot of people that you know, they just, they like have a whole bunch of mealworms they're breeding. So they primarily feed with mealworms and they've had no issues. Um, so yeah, I, I think as long as it's an invertebrate, you're going to be okay. I don't, I don't foresee any problem with just doing mealworms. Let's see what else we got happening here. Eight legs, four wheels says, okay, I have to get off now. Take care all. Thanks Richard for your channels and your support. And thanks for, for the, to the couple new subs. Awesome, man. I hope you have a good night. Thank you for jumping in. Ooh, I just saw a weird question. Let's see. Weird question. Have, have ever come across an egg Calcotes without the black femurs? Mine has all of its legs in a blonde color. Makes me wonder if it's some sort of hybrid. No one I asked has seen this. Actually, yeah, if you go to my website under um, the care sheet section I have on the Afana Pelma Calcotes, um, my first Afana Pelma uh, Calcotes had, no, like it was maybe a slighter, slightly darker gold. So it was like slightly brown, but it almost just all looked blonde, like all over. There was really no coloration difference at all, uh, especially right after a molt. It was beautiful. Um, she ended up passing away just from old age and i got a new one i was seeing if it was out i could point the camera at it um she does have a little bit more of a darker coloration um but uh, again like they were they're all sold as the same species so uh i think it's just one of those things that there's some some slight different differences and and, and I, i'm sure that you know after a few molts i don't you didn't say what size she was or anything like that so it could be as they get older or younger that that might change Jay Jackson asks, what's the biggest enclosure I would need for my P. regalis? <clears throat> I would say full grown, like the smallest you could probably get away with a full grown would be uh, kind of like whoop, these enclosures whoa, that I have over here. These are like uh, Zoomed or Exoterra. Um, I'm trying to, I don't know what they are in centimeters, but it's like eight by eight by 12. That's not right. 12 by 12 by 18 inches. So, I mean, that's like the smallest you could probably get away with like a 10 gallon style but you know i i have a p ornata actually a p ornata a p regalis and a p metallica all of them are in the same type of enclosures and they got more than enough room so i think i think you would be good with that all right uh, the formal top hat says would you ever collaborate with russ again i loved seeing you two together not only will i top form the formal top hat i already have <laughs> and uh and that yeah, we did a podcast together we talked for a couple hours and uh this thursday is the keeper cards podcast the following thursday is rust from aquarimax so make sure you go over to the exotic pet collective 
uh, YouTube channel and subscribe or just, you know, find the Exotic Pet Collective on any of the, you know, pat- platforms that you use to listen to podcasts. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's pretty much everywhere now. And uh, look for that. That'll be, I can look at my calendar. Let's see, that will be the 19th. So, yeah, week before Thanksgiving, uh, we'll be doing that. And uh, it may be like an hour and a half. I think I had to cut it short a little bit because I had another podcast uh, appointment lined up. But yeah, uh, it was a lot of fun talking to him too. We talked about isopods and, and other inverts and even got into like some fish and uh, reptiles, some geckos and stuff that he can't, takes care of. So definitely check that out. And hopefully we'll be able to do another video um, kind of collaboration again. I like, I like Russ a lot. He's a good guy. Get bit brand. I think uh, in the uh, referring to the or relating to the Afonavelma calcodes also said there's some variance in color. So yeah, uh, let's see what content should a beginner tarantula keeper YouTuber include in their videos, and what's the best expo in LA? Um, as far as what content should a beginner tarantula keeper YouTuber include? Uh, that's that's a tough one, man. That's like the million dollar question. I don't I don't even know what the best content is to include in my videos at this point. So it's always it's always uh you just gotta look at your analytics. You post a video, wait a couple of weeks, and then and look at the analytics, see how you know how long people were watching, how many people watched, uh, what kind of uh you know just interaction you got with the video, and then use that because your the people that watch your videos are gonna be different than the people that watch my videos or somebody else's videos. So you really gotta kind of figure out what your core audience is enjoying and and trying to do more of that and the best expo in la i have no idea i've never been to one in la but you should talk to uh nate over at micro wilderness he's from that area so i'm sure he could point you in the right direction let's see what is it i'm trying to find some more questions here See, Richard, you need to put a setup together so I can send you dart frogs. Oh man, that would be very cool. <laughs> I, w- I would love to get some dart frogs. Oh, we got another uh, super chat here. We got five dollars. Greetings from Canada. I'm stupid and very new, but I appreciate how great the community has been with my planning, building, and care information. That's awesome, Noah's Art Exotics. It's, we're very happy to have you here in the hobby. And anything we can do to help, I'm sure. You know, any there's always people that are going to be trolls and and you know just jerks because i mean we're online so that, that's that's just the reality of the internet but um if you go there's plenty of places you can go and find some people that really want to help you out and do what they can to point you in the right direction um you know a lot of great facebook groups depending on you know what you're looking for uh you can check out my facebook group the tarantula collective.com there's uh i just forgot all of the other facebook groups <laughs> there's the tarantula collective um and uh raggy tees that's another good one um i don't know if you're if you're watching this and you're in a facebook group that's very helpful and people are like very welcoming to newcomers and helping people new in the hobby just leave the name of that facebook group in the comments so we can all check them out help out me because my brain is fried at the moment <laughs> but thank you noah arc uh, i really appreciate your support uh see arthropod ambassadors i just i just read that comment I would like to definitely get dart frogs at some point in the future. Um, Pet Rock and Roll, the Balfouri Communal Club. Yes, that was the one I was just trying to think of. <laughs> and I was like, I know it's about fouries, but I also know I'm going to screw it up. Uh, see, uh, the formal top hat says, what's the largest enclosure you have for a tarantula or similar to such currently? Uh, the largest enclosure I have right now is um, actually, can I point at it? Ooh, there's my thumb. This enclosure right back here. That is um, an Exoterra large no i always screw this up not small it's 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 essentially just one of the the large kind of exoteras what do they call that not thin small short flat something like that short i think it's short uh like large short or something it's only about i think it's like 12 inches tall by eight, eight i think it's 12 8 by 18 by 24 or something like that so it's I think equivalent to like a 15 or 20 gallon aquarium. And that's what I have my Theraphos uh, Sturmy in. And, you know, it's it's got more than enough room in there. That's another enclosure I also keep bioactive. Um, really like 15 to 20 gallons is about the largest size you'll need for any tarantula. 
um i mean because they don't move around a whole lot they don't they're not they don't need like territory but yeah let's see what else we got Let's see, uh, Marvin Garcia. Hi, newbie here. I really want to know your opinion in power feeding slings. I think that that's not really a thing um, that works well with, you know, uh, reptiles. But from all of the research that I've seen or experienced, I guess would be a better way of saying it, the experience I've heard from other people, um, power feeding your tarantulas does not really kind of help them grow any quicker. It just gets them to pre-molt faster. You know, it just gets to differentiate between species, but yeah, that's pretty much it. You got to You got to make sure that, um, like, that's why I have my spiderling nursery so I can keep all my spiderlings at a slightly warmer temperature than the rest of my collection, than the rest of the room. And that really helps. I, I feel like, um, and then I also have like a large, like bowl of water in there just so that it kind of keeps the, the air a little bit more humid. And that seems to help them grow out of that spiderling spade, fade, the face a lot faster. Uh, but I'm not like feeding them every day. I, only, I still only feed them once or twice a week. I just find that slightly warmer temperatures helps them grow quicker than than just overfeeding them. Let's see. Drunken philosoph, philosoph says, hey, Richard, greetings from Germany. I love your content. I got my first tarantula two months ago. Well, welcome to the hobby. That is awesome. Glad you enjoy it. Exoterra Tall says, tarantula arc um i don't know i don't know what that is in response to yes love the bioactive enclosures you have richard well thanks a lot tarantula arc i appreciate that uh, let's see the formal top hat asks how do you feel about spiders compared to tarantulas to me tarantulas are adorable but most spiders make me a little uncomfortable i just don't like the hairless slender bodies they are a little creepy that is for sure um and I, I think at first I didn't like him at all, but the longer I've been in the hobby, uh, I kind of like started going over to like the me megalomorphs, like the um, Colombian funnel web spider or some of the, like the curtain web spider. They they, they kind of look like a tarantula because they're, they're kind of hairy, but they also have the more smooth legs and then slowly just really started getting to true spiders as well. I had some um, black widows. I got some trapdoor spiders and uh, yeah, they, they all end up being fascinating after a while. All right, we got another super chat from STI Loss. Five dollars says, "I wish to say thanks for your videos. It helps, but I can't decide between a Brazilian black or green bottle blue. Will be my first. Any suggestions?" Oh, that is that is a tough one. Um, I I think normally I would I would suggest the green bottle blue because that's like my all time favorite tarantula. But if it's your first tarantula ever and you're in between those two, then I I would probably go with the uh, Brazilian black just because they're so relaxed and chill and sweet and it's it's an amazing beginner tarantula um because if you get that tarantula inevitably within six months you're going to want to get another one so i would i would suggest go with the, the brazilian black first and then get the the green bottle blue as your second tarantula <laughs> and thanks thanks so much for the tip and i i'm glad that you enjoy the content man i appreciate it all right what else we have happening here trying to get some more questions out of the way let's see rj ellum says i don't know about you but i keep my slings and juvies upstairs since it tends to be a little more warm and humid they do very well yeah i, I as i mentioned I, I don't keep them upstairs uh, but i do keep them in my nursery so it's it's on the rack uh, i keep looking at it because it's right over there but that doesn't help you because you can't see it but yeah uh, it does keep them a little bit warm uh, let's see bethany says hey richard join i joined the hobby just two months ago and now have 10 t's and two scorpions i blame you i will take that blame <laughs> welcome to the hobby and uh, it's just beginning your addiction is just beginning i mean i i started out with well i didn't even have scorpions i just had like five or ten tarantulas and that quickly grew um but i actually uh i had a podcast recently this last week with um uh, patricia from tarantula heaven she also does the spinneret magazine and we talked a lot about um, just trying to control the impulse to grow in your collection too quick and what to do if you find yourself overwhelmed. So uh, be sure to, you know, 
check that out give it a listen she had some some very insightful um kind of uh perceptions not perceptions just some 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 cool insights into that and in different ways of kind of dealing with it let's see what else we got here let's see there ricardo says how much harder is it to keep a trap door compared to a t i'd say it's it's probably easier because they make their burrow and hide it and that's that's pretty much it i keep the substrate a little little damp i'll, I'll moist it down a little bit more maybe than a tarantula but that also depends on the species of trapdoor spider and then pretty much just drop the cricket in or mealworm and watch them you, you get to enjoy like half a second of seeing them bolt out of the trapdoor grab it and, and then dive back in so it's uh it's probably as easy if not easier but not as satisfying you know you don't get to see them they're not out walking around a lot like a tarantula would be let's see uh i guess it's like adam's corner uh it says hey man just wanted to say thanks for your videos helped us out a bunch that is awesome and i like that uh i like that scorpion you've got there on your your logo Hey, Richard, uh, this is from Ben Churchman. I have a uh, Juby B. Amelia that has a very small abdomen. It last molted about six weeks ago, and it won't eat. I have seen it drinking a few times. Have you ever experienced this behavior? Yeah, um, uh, all, from all kinds of species. They'll molt and, and not want to eat. Sometimes, you know, it, it could be they're just being shy or bashful. So, you know, try dropping a cricket in there and then just leaving it for, you know, maybe the night and check on it in the morning see if it if it uh, took it down over the night you may also want to if you can i mean you don't want to like stress the tarantula out or anything but if you, if it's like crawling at the side of the enclosure just try to shine a flashlight on its fangs make sure that there are no issues sometimes when a tarantula molts there the fangs uh can break or there's issues with it um and again it, it's a juvenile so i mean after a couple of weeks it'd probably be ready to eat and it could just be it was overfed before it molted and it's just not hungry yet I mean, there's all, I mean, they're, they're picky. <laughs> and I know right now it's getting cold where I am. And it seems when the temperature starts dropping outside and like the basement's getting a little bit colder than it was in the summer, uh, they start eating less often, you know, or some of them just like, well, don't eat at all until it starts warming up again. So that may be something to keep in mind as well. It, it, it's not really like a snake going into bromation or anything. They don't hibernate, but uh, I have noticed that most of the tarantulas in my collection tend to not eat as much or as often the, the cooler it gets outside all right moving on there's so many comments i'm trying to keep up with you guys uh let's see what's this uh nathan or i'm sorry nathaniel says your podcast episode the zena tarantula keeping was great i needed to hear that right when you posted it thanks for all the content and honesty well thank you man i'm glad you uh you found that helpful it's always weird sometimes putting putting yourself out there like that, getting a little personal with people. But I mean, that's what podcast is all about, I guess. Uh, Rebecca says, "My husband was in the hobby before we got together. He asked if we could get a juvenile LP a few months ago, and I fell in love. We have ten T's now, and I'm super excited for our collection to grow. That is very cool. It's always I, I always get jealous really when I hear uh, about couples keeping tarantulas together. Uh, like alternative inverts, love his channel. Um, he and his wife." um i assume it's his wife oh man i hope i just didn't throw you under the bus <laughs> yeah yeah i'm pretty sure he's, he's referred to her as they're beautiful people rachel um and i get jealous that they have that uh that, that kind of bond of because i mean it's just me that keeps the tarantulas here uh my wife tolerates it she comes down and enjoys it sometimes same with my kid but they're not like they don't want to go buy more tarantulas they're not you know into it like i am so uh i am kind of jealous <laughs> when i when i see some of that happening so you know good on you and hopefully it helps build your relationship and, and make you guys even closer uh let's see dixie norma says it's a very addictive hobby one tarantula is all you need to get addicted that is very true all right here's an interesting question uh june says what would you do if you had to leave home for a few days and had no one to check in on your tea would it be a bad idea to take the tea with you if it's only going to be for a few days like a week or less 
Um, and this also depends on the size of your tarantula. Like if it's a full-grown tarantula, they'll be more than than fine by themselves for a week, <laughs> let alone a few days. But even a spiderling, like if you made sure to have like a little water bowl in there and fed them right before you left, I think they would be fine for two or three days. In fact, they might enjoy a little bit of a, a reprieve, <laughs> a little bit of privacy and nobody like looking at them and messing with them. Uh, so that they might enjoy that vacation from you. Um, you know, taking them with you, that's risky. Uh, just because the there's always, anytime you're moving a tarantula in an enclosure, there's always the risk that you could drop it or something could happen and you end up hurting the tarantula inadvertently. And, and it's also, they're very... Um, receptive is that the word i'm looking for sensitive they're very sensitive to vibrations and movement so it, it could really stress them out if you're moving them around throwing them in a car and taking them somewhere and you know it, it unnecessarily kind of stressing them out and that you don't want to do that so i i would say that they're that's like the benefit of having tarantulas keeping tarantulas that they're low maintenance when it comes to stuff like that like you can go away for three or four days and not have to worry about having somebody to babysit or pet sit like they they they're self sufficient as long as you've fed them in water and before you left you, you you can take a little break for a while. So yeah, uh, I would say leave them home rather than take them with you. Let's see. Extreme Buzz says, "What's your thought on communal teas? If you have one, or do you plan on having more?" Uh, I have a inbound four e communal. I'm a big fan of them. They are awesome. They are uh, actually ooh, right there, right next to my. I don't even know if you can tell with my thumb. Let's see. Cameras are difficult. There we go. That is uh, in Balfour. And it's like right next to the um, Theraphosa Sturmy enclosure. And I have had a lot of success with them. They're very cool. Um, but that's like the only real communal species that I would feel comfortable with keeping. I know people have tried P like uh, Postletheria regalis or Metallica. There's some people that have N NCs, Nithali NCs, uh, a few other species. Uh, and, and I'm not like bashing anybody that does that. Uh, if you want to try it and it's successful, that's awesome. Um, uh, personally, that's the only one that I've had any success with or really any interest in trying just because I've seen so many other people's experience. It seems like there's a much higher success rate with Mbalfori than there is with, uh, pretty much any other species. So until things change and some other people's experience are showing they've kept like P Metallica is one I've seen a lot of people recently. Uh, having a lot of success with so yeah it's something to to consider maybe one day i'll do that but right now just in about fours let's see what we got here i'll play hosgar so i got my first so i got my first t four days ago i love it and got over my fear of spiders right away it's a brocky pelma erratum it always out in the open and what do you recommend for a t that keeps showing itself much love. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that question means. <laughs> Maybe I read it wrong. I apologize. Now let's see what else we got. Somebody's heading to bed. Glorified Pet Rocks says, I'm going to head to bed. It's almost 1030 here in the UK. Good night, everyone. This was a great first live video and chat. I've been awesome, man. Well, Hopefully you're not already gone. I don't know how far behind I am in the chat, but I'm glad that you stopped in. So thank you so much for joining me uh, and all of us. I appreciate that. Oh, here's one. Uh, how's your C versa color in your pal paludarium working out? And of course it was, it's, it's in this enclosure right here. <laughs> and where my finger is, that piece of cork bark up until like I went live, like I, I probably, it was when I walked through the, the room to sit here at the desk it was just kind of hanging out there and i thought oh this is gonna be awesome it'll be right on the open where people can see it but it's so far it's doing really well uh as you can kind of see uh it hasn't really webbed up the enclosure very much but uh back behind the cork bark in between the cork bark and the glass it's really started webbing up there so um so far so good but it's only you know it's only been about uh, 10 days now so we still got still got a long way to go uh, but I'm keeping an eye on it. You know, I got to feed that beta fish twice a day. So I'm I'm checking on it all the time. <laughs> uh, and the first sign of trouble, I'm going to pull her out of there. But so far, it, we've been okay. Let's see. What else we got going on here, guys? What's this one? Ofi from Ofi's Spider Verse says, hi, we follow you on Instagram. We love all your information. My dad is on the keyboard. Awesome. 
Well, thank you so much. Uh, and I say hello back. I appreciate your support. I'll be, I'll have to be sure to check out your, uh, your Instagram. If I'm not already following, I'll definitely check that out. Let's see. Uh, James Hensley says, hello. I tried a bioactive enclosure from, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Diefenbachia plants with an AVIC and a C versicolor. Both started having seizures and leg span. Uh, Remove the plants. The AVIC died, but Versi recovered. Oh man, that's, uh, that's pretty wild. I, I, uh, I have over there where I can't get to it, the species of plants that I used. Um, and I actually did a little bit of research on those, talked to um, both the invertebrate and plant people with. they suggested for that enclosure knowing full and well what species of tarantula was going to be going in there um so i i i so far i haven't had any problems and i feel confident and i'm actually going to be doing a patreon video like a video just for patreon members or uh, youtube channel members kind of breaking down like how like all the details to that enclosure like how i built it um or put it together i guess would be a better word what exactly is in there and uh, kind of giving updates on it through there in between videos on the YouTube channel. So um, now when I make that video, I'll be sure to, to list exactly what species of plants that I used. Hmm. Alternative inverts having a conversation. Let's see. Hey, Richard, I just ordered a L. periabana and T. alvipilosum. How far were you into the hobby when you picked up these? Uh, pretty uh pretty early on in the hobby well i mean that's relative um i kept tarantulas for many years like over a decade with just one species and it was like just gramistola rosea because that was like really all i had access to uh but once i found online dealers and i bought a few brocky pelma species and you know within uh, probably like in the first 10 or 20 i got was definitely an l periabana and uh at the time it was brocky pelma albopilosum Al but yeah, both are, are are great beginner species. Um, the only thing I would say is, you know, be careful with the uh, El Periabana, the Salmon Peak Bird Eater, even as a spiderling. Like when it was in enclosures that were like this size, I would still, like when I would rehouse it, could feel the early getting hairs. They would drive me crazy. So if you're sensitive to hairs, especially that species, uh, you know, just be sure to wear gloves or something like that. Be careful. Uh, you definitely don't want, you don't want, <laughs> To deal with those urticating hairs they can they can drive you crazy uh let's see alan the hamster says hey richard getting my first tea it's an l periabana shout out to jamie's tarantulas curious on the growth rate of the slings that species grows fast they uh they're they're small spiderling and they get really large and in my experience they're, they're a fast grower so yeah definitely uh let's see i don't know why that didn't show up it says Dave Gill, PHP 25. So thank you so much for that donation. I appreciate that. True devil, rub a magic lamp and hope. <laughs> Sometimes I think I should read these before I just click on them. I'm just like, well, that looks like a question. We'll, we'll click on that. Uh, Meza Max says, what is a good old first world that, wait, what is a good old first, I think you mean old world, Way good old, a good first old world. There we go. That thrive in room temperature of about 72 degrees. Um, I actually have a video on my channel that's uh, pretty much, I think it's what it's called is best beginner, like top 10 best beginner old world tarantulas. Uh, I would suggest checking that out because I have a list of all of them that would definitely fit uh, what your you know suggestion is right there. Um, I mean, with the exception of maybe like the Omothymus violaceppes, they'd like it a little bit warmer. I mean, pretty much any um any old world tarantula is going to be fine in that temperature uh the certigyrus darlingi is a good one uh they're an old world mine are actually on the lowest shelf so they're in the coolest part of the room and they're thriving they're more of an arboreal uh, it's the rear horn baboon tarantula i just said arboreal i meant fossorial <laughs> so that that's a good one um uh, Harpectera polcripes is another one I've had a lot of success with. That are they're freaking uh, they're just tanks. It doesn't matter what I do, they, they thrive. So yeah, 
um, I would definitely check those out. All right, what else you got saying in here? Someone, uh, hey Richard, watching from the Philippines. Can I get a shout out? Ha ha ha! I love your Karen husbandry videos. More power. Well, you have been sis, you have been shouted out, my friend. I'm gonna try and pronounce your name, uh, Yevis or just Ves Valoria. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, and then shout out to everybody in the Philippines. I know there's a lot of you guys, so uh, it seems like everybody. I get a lot of comments. Like when, when I look at the analytics of my videos, it seems. Like when I think of it in my mind, it would be U.S., Canada, Europe, Philippines, or I don't even know where the Philippines would fit. But I would think the first three would be the U.S., Canada, and and Europe, at least the U.K. And for whatever reason, it's always like U.S., Philippines, U.K., Canada. <laughs> so you guys are giving me a lot of support. So I definitely appreciate you all. Uh, oh yeah, uh, she says uh, Pet Rock and Roll says Monish and Trophy is about forty for sure. Yes, I second that. That is a, a great suggestion. And Pet Rock and Roll's got some uh, first aid tips. Don't rub the area affected by the hairs. Rinse under cold water instead. That is, that is some good advice. I'm actually, I'm working, not even working. I haven't started filming it, but I'm like writing out a video on uh, home remedies for urticating hairs because I have tried it. I've tried duct tape. I've tried hot wax. I've tried mustard. I've tried all kinds of prescription and over-the-counter creams. And um, then there's a whole list of different remedies to try and take care of some urticating hairs that are driving me crazy. So I'm putting all that information together and, and it won't even like be, you know, prescriptive. It's just like, this is what worked for me. So maybe try this. I'm not saying it's going to work for you, uh, but there are some things out there people suggest that are just terrible ideas. <laughs> It just hurt you more, I think, in the long run. Um, but yeah, so if you've got some some great suggestions for uh, ways to help out urticating hairs, you know, leave it in the comments or send me an email or something um, or a message on Instagram. So I'd love to hear some of your home remedies because people are creative, and I, I want to try some more of them out. Let's see. Um, Alan the Hamster says, "Hey Richard, so I have an apartment complex without heat in Wisconsin." My apartment can get as cold as low 60s. Is that going to affect an LP? Jeez, I mean, if you're in an apartment complex with no heat in Wisconsin, I would be blowing up your landlord. <laughs> that's just that's just cruel. Um, low 60s could be dangerous. Uh, I, I try not to go below like 68, 65. If it's only briefly, like late at night. If it's consistently in the low 60s, you may want to think about um, finding some way of warming up the area around the enclosures, you know, like maybe keep them in a closet that has some kind of small heater in it. Uh, they've got those like uh, radiator heaters you can plug into your wall and have them in a, have that in a small room with a tarantula. So just that room is in, you know, upper 70s or I'm sorry, upper 60s uh, or low to mid 70s. Uh, or, you know, depending on the size of it, definitely check out that video I was talking about earlier about uh, tarantula nurseries. Uh, it's essentially, I made that whole video because I was having issues with my room getting too cold in the winter and i needed some way of keeping the temperature for my spiderlings uh you know above the mid 60s so that a video will break down now even if it's cold inside the room you can create this you know nursery to keep those enclosures inside that's like a, it creates like a microclimate so that that may be uh maybe something you want to do i i would i wouldn't think it'd be good for a tarantula to be that cold for that long French Lark says, Richard, best thing to use for hairs is wear gloves and long sleeves. True that. All right, Jackie's Green Cats and Things says, what size tank do you recommend for an adult jumping spider? Oh, man, I don't have a whole lot of experience with uh, adult jumping spiders. I did get, I did have, have, have had them before. And it's, I remembered when I was doing my research, uh, it was a little deceptive because they're so small, you would think they need a small enclosure. Uh, but they do really like jumping a lot and can jump her pretty far. Um, I I am not an expert on jumping spiders, so I'm not going to be the best, but I know that I was looking at putting it in a 12 by 12 by 12 Exoterra. I was going to kind of set it up arborally, and even that people were saying was on the small side. Like, I should really be going a little bit larger than that. Um, just so, yeah, it's it's it can be frustrating because they're so small. Um, but yeah, uh, I just got a message. Uh, 
Um, yeah, that has nothing to do with the live stream. So yeah, I mean, I, I would I would look at the twelve by twelve by twelve kind of go with that. Um, but maybe I mean I think that that's similar to five and a half gallon, maybe a ten gallon enclosure would would be good. Um, but there are some people in the chat right now I know that keep um, jumping spiders, so I'm sure they'll be more than happy to correct me if I'm wrong or give you a little bit more insight. Uh, but I know that initially I was keeping mine in like a large critter keeper and it was not happy. And that's when I was like, I was doing the research and was like, whoa, this is m way too small. So I needed to get in something a little bit bigger. So yeah, ch definitely check that out. Let's see, arthropod ambassadors. That's interesting. Yeah, I definitely have to check that out. What do we got here? What do I do if mom doesn't want to let me get a snake? I don't know. Some of your chores <laughs> and suck up and 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 prove that you're responsible and, and can handle the responsibility of uh, adding a pet like that. And you know, maybe maybe that'll change your tune. Let's see. Alternative invert says, Tony, we that I'm always pulling out your comments that have nothing to do with this live stream. <laughs> like getting into your personal conversations there. Um thoughts on the funnel web spiders uh i've got a few of them uh, there's, a, there's the code that common name seems to be thrown around so much i've got the colombian uh funnel web spider i actually had two of them and was like waiting for them to molt so that i could do a cool video on them and one of them molted successfully and the other one did not and i'm not sure exactly what happened um because i kept them both exactly the same one is thriving and that one just this did not do well. I don't know if it just got stuck in its molt or what, what could have happened. Um, but so I've got one of them now and I just moved it into one of those um, Zoomed insectarium arboreal enclosures. You know, it's like kind of a tall glass uh, with, with a, a lid and it's webbing the heck out of the place right now. And I, I find that species very interesting. I like it a lot. But then I have a, a Duropi species uh, I don't even know if I'm saying any of that right. It's referred to as like the curtain web spider. Um, not really a funnel web spider, but that one's really cool. I got some videos of it on uh, Instagram if you ever want to check that out. And on TikTok, I believe. But I don't know. Nobody watches my TikTok videos anymore. Like when I started out on TikTok, it was like videos were getting tens of thousands, you know, of views. Some of them were like half a million views. And then somewhere in the past three, four months, I think the algorithm was just like, you know, people don't like tarantula videos. <laughs> so now they get like a few hundred, maybe a few thousand views, uh, which can be discouraging. It's like, I don't even know if I want to continue posting on, on TikTok. Uh, let's see. We got uh, Bethany Staples says, hey, Richard, do you have any Asian forest scorpions? I have two. I love them. And they have so much attitude. They're so grumpy. I do. I've got... Uh, I got an Asian forest scorpion and I got two different species that they're both referred to as Asian forest scorpions. And I, I agree. <laughs> they might not really grumpy. I, I don't know if I'd say they're grumpy. Uh, they're territorial. That is for sure. <laughs> they can't get around messing in their enclosure. Like, Hey, this is my space back up. <laughs> um, I'm actually working on a video. I just did a video a few weeks ago on the emperor scorpion. And uh, I think the next species specific video coming out is the Ternopelma Sazimi, Sazameng, however you say that. Um, yeah. And it's, I just forgot, it's a blue tarantula whose name just escaped me. Is it Brazilian blue? Something like that. Uh, it's a common name. But that will be next. And then uh, the ter 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 I can't speak. But then the following species specific video is going to be the Asian forest scorpion. So keep an eye out for that um let's see what else we have here i'll play hosgar says so i got my first tea four days ago i love it i got over my fears of spiders right away it's a brachypelma erratum it's always in the open what do you recommend for a tea that keeps showing itself so much love we i've already asked that I've read that question before uh, i don't know what you mean by what do i recommend for a tea that keeps showing itself so much love that's confusing um yeah, if you're looking for another tea like that, if that's what you're asking, pretty much any of the other Brachypelma species would be good. Like the uh, the Homori is a, is a great one, or Homori, however you say that. Um, the Gramistola pulchra, uh, Green Bottle Blue, Gramistola pulchripes, the Chaco Golden Knee, that, that one's out in the open a lot. 
Uh, let's see. All hail Queen Pissy says, hey, Mr. Richard, what first old world would you recommend for 14 year old me? Oh, geez. Um, I, I would have to go with uh, uh, Pet Rock and Roll on this and say Monus and Troph is about 40. That one is a, is a pretty chill old world. Um, I'm, I'm looking around my enclosure for something that would jump out. I feel like that that that's the one. Um, that or uh, like the Fossoria, like the Cedar Lingy. Mine, mine's pretty. And I'm just sharing you my experience. I'm just telling you my species, my specimens of these species. This is how they act. So you may get one that's just completely bonkers, <laughs> but uh, my sea darling is pretty, uh, pretty relaxed as well. Some of that has to do with how you keep them. Uh, but the, yeah, the, the Imbalfori is a good one. And the other one I mentioned earlier that I can't think of now. Um, yeah. <laughs> Somebody said chill. H. Paul Cripes, that's it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> T's, T's, helping me out. Uh, let's see. Alternative inverts, that's sweet. I've just subscribed. I'm waiting on them videos. All right. Yeah, get over, subscribe to Pet Rock and Roll and Alternative Inverts. They support my channel a lot. Definitely got to check out, definitely got to support their channels, as well as Tarantula Arc. And yeah, she's helping out in the chat as well. With some moderator responsibilities that I didn't even ask her to do. I just thrust it upon her. <laughs> like, you're a moderator now. <laughs> uh, hey, Richard, have you ever had a tea bolt on you and escape? Oh, yeah. Yeah, more than once. Um, it's, it, and that's, that's why earlier in the video I was using that tub because I knew that both of these species are pretty quick. So if they were going to bolt, I wanted to make sure uh, they weren't going to run under my computer or cameras or there's so many things right in this general area that are electronics and little gaps and that would have been bad. Uh, so, yeah. Like usually, I mean, they'll, they'll escape, but I, I always catch them. <laughs> like they don't get too far. Uh, in fact, I did another, what was it? I was feeding. It was either feeding or an unboxing. Uh, I did another live stream, live stream months ago, and it was like, it just took off. And I was like chasing it around the table. It was, it was all bad news. Uh, but, you know, it's fun. Uh, if you're prepared, you got a catch cup handy, all that stuff, and it won't be a problem. Let's see. My red knee is a juvenile. This is from Meza Max, and it's always in its burrow. It's is that still normal, or mean it's stressed? Yeah, that that's normal. Uh, Brocky palmas, gramostolas, afana palmas, especially when they're young, spend the majority of their time in their burrow. So it's not like not, doesn't mean anything bad's happening, and it doesn't even necessarily mean that they're in premolt. Like I had an afana palma that will just go in its burrow for two or three months at a time and then come out and sit on the surface until I feed it. And once it takes that meal, it, it burrows back down and hangs out there for two or three more months. It seems uh, they're very slow growing. So yeah, it, that in fact, I think it means the opposite that they're stressed. I think it means that they're at that moment when they're in their burrow and they got it sealed up, that's probably the most comfortable. Um, so they're, they're not stressed out at that time. They, they got their, their door shut with a do not disturb sign hanging on there saying like, leave me alone. I am cool right now. <laughs> so, yeah, don't worry about that. That that's typical behavior. Let's see. Oh, here is a good one. Uh, Matthew Tomlinson says, "What tea do you want to add to your collection the most, and why?" Oh man, that that's there's there's a few for sure. Um, I would say probably the the I can't even. Oh man, I can't. Therophosani species Panama, the uh, lava tarantula that's like the highest one on my list and uh you know i've been wanting that one for quite a while um hopefully i will be getting one in the near near future uh i think i've got a trade worked out um and we'll be getting one of those but you never know like i, I don't count my roosters that's not the thing i don't count my chickens until the oh how did i forget that don't count your don't count your chickens until the eggs hatch or whatever that's saying <laughs> it's like complete my brain is so fried at the moment sorry uh i believe it when i see it i guess when I, when one is finally shipped to me then i'll be like yes but that that's definitely a tea that i want to add to my collection that i don't have just because it's so beautiful uh and it's so rare it seems like i have a hard time finding it for a few years um and now i know some people that have bred them successfully and hopefully i'll be able to get a spiderling and watch it grow uh other than that um I mean, I have like a very short list of teas that I, I want to add to my collection right now. And that, that was definitely one of them in the D diamond nesses. Uh, that's not it. <laughs> this one right here. 
uh, that Tarantula Haven was kind enough to send me. That was definitely on my short list because I only had the the one and I haven't been able to sex this one, but I fear that it's going to be a male. So it was very cool of him to send me out a few of them. So hopefully I won't be getting a female. Uh, other than that, um, there is another one. I, I can't, and it's like the Trinidad Copper Tarantula or something like that. There's some of those uh, that have been coming out recently, kind of like the Colombian Blue Bottle. I think it's the same genus as those, and I can't think of the names right now, but they're beautiful tarantulas. I would definitely like to, to add one of those. Let's see. Um, Alan the Hamster, are there any adult terrestrial teas that prefer moist substrate? I notice most of the substrates tend to be drier conditions. Is there a negative to having it more moist? There are species that enjoy... Uh, you know, damper substrate, uh, a lot of your pamphibita species, anethesis, uh, Drexopelmas, uh, Theraphosa, dot, or not Theraphosa, Theraphosa species. You know, a lot of those like kind of Brazilian jungle species do like it. Uh, if you're keeping desert species or tarantulas that, that enjoy a more arid environment on damp substrate, um, one, they just, they'll probably be stressed out and try to find the driest spot of the enclosure to go. Uh, but you also you just have all kinds of issues with mold and, and fungus and mushrooms and mites and, you know, gnats and different kind of board flies and fungus flies. And, you know, if you don't have to keep it damp, then definitely don't. Uh, that's for sure. All hail Queen Pussy or Pissy says, hey, Mr. Richard, can I feed a tiny lizard to my tarantulas? I'm not going to do it. Uh, you can, uh, if they're a full grown tarantula, I would say, uh, I have had to feed, um, my Coslotheria regalis, as well as my, um, Theraphosa sturmy, like the Goliath bird eater and the ghost ornamental tarantula. Um, both have had feeder lizards in the past. Um, for, there was a shortage on crickets or doobie roaches or whatever it was, if I could get a feeder lizard very cheap and I knew they were hungry and it kind of like. I feed them that and I don't have to feed them for a few months. Like it's a lot of food. Uh, so yeah, you can, um, you, the problem I think that arises usually is that people get excited and, and, you know, for whatever reason they want to do that. And they're trying to feed a lizard to a tarantula that is just too small to take down that kind of prey. And then it becomes a battle and that's, that's not good at all. So, you know, always make sure it's appropriate, uh, appropriate size. On play, Hosgar says, this might be a dumb question. I know a tea can't kill humans, but I have cats and they are idiots. They always hang out uh, at the tea's terror. Can a tea kill my cat? Yeah, oh, man, I, I don't know. I really don't know the answer to that. I guess it would depend. I, I would think that a New World tarantula would not be able to. Uh, I mean, their venom really doesn't even take out a mouse. It more just kind of like incapacitates them, you know. So a, a cat, I would I would think, would be much larger um old world tarantula possibly yeah it, it could be enough but you know th that's getting into this the whole science and biological chemistry and stuff like that and I, I just i don't know how the venom would affect them um yeah i would definitely be safe if you got old world tarantulas make sure that your cat doesn't get into them because it'd be risky uh but i haven't heard anybody saying anything about a tarantula killing their cat before uh, so it's, it might be okay well i'm not saying it might be okay i'm saying i don't know <laughs> that's what i'm saying uh, let's see what other questions we got here. Oh, we got a, a new member here. Uh, Pink Speeder became a YouTube member. So thanks a lot, Pink Speeder. I appreciate your support. I did have like these. Oh, wait, I think it's this one. Yeah, thank you, Pink Speeder. It is awesome to have you. You uh, be sure to check out the community section or anybody that became members today. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, tarantula collective and go to the community so you there's like uh, videos and playlists and there's all these different tabs across the top of the youtube channel if you go to the one that says community you'll have access to like all the like the wall of things that i post and on there there will be videos pictures you know announcements stuff like that that are just for youtube members like nobody else can see them unless they're a youtube member so you know now that you're a member you can go back and watch all the old little videos and, and and posts and stuff like that and you'll also have access to the new ones uh, as they come up same with patreon supporters you know i kind of cross post them so whether you're a youtube member or a patreon supporter you get both of those i haven't posted anything in the past few weeks uh just because life has been so crazy um uh, but i'm definitely i've got some stuff like recorded and on my computer right here i just gotta put it together so i can release it for you guys some uh, some more exclusive content uh, but again, thanks. Thank you so much, Pink Speeder. Um, let's see what else we got. 
Pet Rock and Roll, giving a shout out. Thank you so much, Pet Rock and Roll. Uh, well, into what is today? Today's Tuesday, so that is for Saturday. Pet Rock and Roll and and the gang will be doing a Tarantula Tubers Saturday Night Takeaway. You guys definitely should check that out. If you're enjoying this live stream, then you'll definitely enjoy theirs because it's not just one person talking like here. They've <laughs> got a whole group of people uh, kind of hanging out and and talking and stuff like that, and it's fun. It's an, it's enjoyable. So. You know, alternative inverts, pet rock and roll, Danny Damon from Keeper Cards, uh, sometimes JoJo Exos Caverns on there. I'm closing my eyes because that will help me see who else is on Mr. Grindler's Creatures, Couch, Locked Arachnophobia, and I feel like I'm missing other people. <laughs> my yeah. So hopefully they'll they'll uh if I forgot your channel, I'm very sorry. <laughs> It doesn't mean I, I dislike you or anything. It's just uh, my brain doesn't want to work right now. Bre Brian Perez says, I know you love teas, but have you ever had a tarantula that scared you? Uh, yeah, a lot of my, uh, that's, I mean, that's why I got into tarantula keeping because tarantula scared me. Spiders scared me. So at the beginning, they all did. Uh, and right now, there are some species that still kind of get my blood moving. Uh, the top of that list would be the Theraphosa blondi, or I'm sorry, the Theraphosa sturmi um just because i'm so sensitive to its hairs like i get nervous it's going to kick hairs and and get me before i can react or protect myself um uh, post letheria ornata is is a little moody and sometimes I, I i get a little nervous interacting with it uh, but other than that i mean once the more you get to learn about tarantulas and, and get comfortable around them and and get to like i don't want to say their, their personality may not be the best word but you kind of you 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 get to know them you know you know what to expect how how they react um and and the, the more you interaction you have with them like feeding them and water them and rehousing uh it's just one of those situations the more you know the less you fear so yeah i mean it, it's uh at this point I, I don't think there's really any of them that like scare me to the point that i'm afraid to feed them or anything like that uh, it's more more not it's not so much that i'm scared i just have a healthy respect for those species uh, let's see most dangerous tea in the hobby in your opinion man i did a whole video on that as well uh, i gave you my top 10 uh my picks like the most dangerous teas in my collection at least and to be honest i don't even i don't even remember what the number one was i have to go back and watch it <laughs> i make those videos and i'm like i know it's gonna be these 10 but uh yeah it was probably uh h maculata or one or one of those species um there's, there's some uh I mean, in my collection, I would say the the grumpiest, the one that I got to be the most careful with is probably, um, man, that's a tough one. Probably my uh, post Letheria ornata, I think is is like I said, that, that's just a she's just a big, huge female that doesn't like being messed with, so I don't mess with her. Uh, let's see what else we have. I don't think I've read any of your comments yet. Habs and teas, go Habs, go. If you had to choose, which one would it be? Syria Pogapus or a, oh, a man, Avastradium or Levidium? Uh, I, would, I would say I just have a, a very soft spot in my heart for a Levidium. So that I would be going with that one. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else you got here? Do you have any experience with a Salmopius or Minya? I do. Um, I mean, I, I just, oh, this is a Salmopius Cambrigi. Um, I, I have a video on the Salmopius Erminia. Do I? Yes. The Venezuelan Sun Tiger Tarantula. Yeah, yeah that's one I have. So <laughs> check that out. I, I share all my experience and uh, how I feed them and house them and all that stuff in that video. Uh, so yeah, check that out. Any tips on getting my A. Simoni or T. Alvahosum adult females to burrow? They have more than half a tank full of cocoa fiber, but prefer to stay topside. Hey, if they don't want to burrow, they don't want to burrow. You, you can't force them. That's like uh, you can lead a, a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. Like you, your tarantula is not going to burrow in, unless it feels like it needs to. You know, and a lot of times with the adults, like they won't, they'll feel comfortable and they won't want to burrow until they're about ready to molt or something like that. Uh, at least the albopelosum, like mine, was always out until it was ready to molt, and then it would burrow deep, <laughs> and I wouldn't see it for a few months, but. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't try to force the situation. Enjoy the fact that they're not burrowing. Um, and maybe make sure that uh, your cocoa fiber isn't too compact. Like sometimes I think yeah, we press it in almost too much and they maybe have a hard time actually digging it or realizing they can dig it. 
Uh, so, I mean, if, if it's really, really tight, maybe break it up a little bit on the top. But other than that, I, I wouldn't worry about that. I mean, that's you're, I feel like you're lucky that they're not spending all their time in their burrow. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, Harley Bray says, hey, Richard, my grandma's stolen pulchra is almost the size of a half dollar. Uh, when will she molt? And what signs should I look for, look out for before she molts so I can be prepared? Uh, I mean, I, I have no way of, of telling you when she will molt. That's, uh, that's up to the tarantula, I guess. So. I get that question a lot, like how fast will this tarantula grow or at what size will it molt? Um, you know, I think a lot of it's kind of, a, and maybe there is, maybe if I like took better notes and paid a lot better attention, I could tell you, uh, but I mean, it's going to differentiate between specimens depending on what temperature and what size and what you're feeding it. And there's so many variables in that situation. Um, so when will it molt? I don't know, but signs you could look out for, uh, especially with the pulchra, uh, their abdomen will be, not just plump, like that can happen just from overfeeding it, but you'll start to see that it's shiny. You know, and, uh, sometimes they'll kick hairs off and you can see like this kind of whitish or like um, not whitish, topish, brownish kind of spot. That'll get shiny and start to get dark. Uh, when that's like shiny and dark, then you know it's getting close to pre molt. And also kind of be a lot more lethargic and more than likely will burrow uh, and, and like seal up a door or something. Um, so when that happens, then you know it's, it's probably going to get ready to molt. Uh, if they're larger like my pulchra uh, molted not too long ago and it, it what it actually did is just it covered this this whole it made a whole little molting mat and, and it kind of hung out there but it was a similar it, it was really losing its black color it was kind of getting more of a silveryish grayish color and that abdomen was trying to get that little shiny shiny spot dark spot on, on the back of it so yeah check, look out for that Oh, here's, here's the one. Uh, Richard Rod Ricardo Rodriguez says, really looking to get a heteropoda David Bowie. Do you have any experience with them? Do you recommend them? Any advice? I do. I have one. Uh, I just actually moved it from a juvenile enclosure to an adult enclosure. Uh, not, it really wasn't large enough to go into the adult enclosure, but it was starting to outgrow its juvenile enclosure. And I didn't want to like have to do one additional rehouse. So I just went ahead and kind of took the, took the jump and moved it into its, its final home. Uh, they are extremely fast, but man, they're beautiful. <laughs> so, uh, if actually, I think it was probably six months ago or something like that. Uh, I did a live stream where I was feeding it and it like teleported out of the enclosure. Like it just was like, boom, and it was gone. So, you know, you, you got to be careful with them as far as that's concerned. Make sure you got a catch cup handy and that you're like on your game. Um, but other than that, they're, they're pretty easy to take care of. They, they eat like champs. Uh, I keep mine on. A little bit of a more humid enclosure like it's not like like overly humid but i've got a water dish in there and i overflow it a lot and kind of keep the the substrate a little damp uh because i notice sometimes it seems like if, if it dries out it, it could uh and uh, it, i don't want to say it stresses it to you but any any time i was like concerned about it it's because it, it was really dry in the enclosure so i i've been keeping it on a little bit more on the uh, humid side Let's see what we got here. Hey, Brian, he has another channel called the Exotic Pet Collector. He has other exotics, including snakes. Well, thank you, Extreme Buzz. I do. Um, the Exotic Pet Collective, uh, you know, I've got snakes, I've got geckos, scorpions. Um, I mean, the Tarantula Collective is mainly just tarantulas, sometimes scorpions. But on that channel is where I'm uploading all the podcasts and we'll also be doing videos on my scorpions and snakes. And uh, I got some mantis and uh, other other invertebrates and reptiles and stuff so uh yeah if you want to check that out that'll be there let's see brian perez says if you had to choose one what would you pick mexican fire leg or arizona blonde asking because i'm looking to add a final tee to my collection if you don't have an arizona blonde i feel like man i don't know those are both are both really good ones um I don't know, buddy. That's a tough one. I mean, I, I think I would go with the uh, the Arizona Blonde. I mm -hmm. just love that a fauna pelma calcotes. Mine's they're just really cool tarantulas. They're maybe not as as brightly colored as the uh, Mexican Fire Lake, but um, they're definitely an awesome tarantula. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, I said it came in order. He actually did a video on what he feels the top 10 beginner tees are for sure and then somebody said oh there it is he has a video on the most underrated yeah i just probably didn't go back far enough to see what it was <laughs> uh but i did do a video on like uh top 10 beginner tarantulas that you might be overlooking 
and in that video i kind of listed what like my what 10 tarantulas are very commonly um suggested as beginner tarantulas that i would also agree with kind of like really quickly went through those 10 and then counted down the 10 species that i think are also very cool tarantulas that you know most people don't even think about when they're beginners but would make some make some really good ones um have you ever seen wait yes have you ever seen owned an agenic gelata that wasn't food aggressive i got a gv female three weeks ago fed her twice and it took minutes before she took it and the attack was super gentle yeah i mean it, it goes back and forth i guess um especially if you just got it uh, a few weeks ago it still is i mean it takes these tarantulas sometimes not just days but like weeks or months before they really feel comfortable in their enclosure and you know if, if they're not like super settled in yet feeling at home then they may be a little more trepidatious when it comes to attacking prey but i have a feeling give that thing six months and it's like settled into its house and hungry and uh, it'll be rolling across the enclosure <laughs> attacking its food <clears throat> darren watson says how involved are the spouse and kids with your with a keep up of your i messed that up with the upkeep of your collection um no not at all involved i guess would be the nice way of putting it um you know they don't help me feed or clean or rehouse or anything like that that's like my hobby that's that's kind of my way of unwinding and um not just like having time by myself but i mean that's that's just that's my thing uh they support me like emotionally i guess <laughs> um i don't know if that's the right word they encourage me uh but they don't like do any of the chores they don't clean the enclosures or feed them or anything like that uh sometimes my son will help feeding or will watch me rehouse but he doesn't you know it's not his thing you know playing video games is his thing uh yeah my, my now my wife is the one that got the snakes like i really didn't have any interest in getting snakes at first but she wanted to get some king she wanted to get a king snake which turned into a king snake and a California, like an Eastern king snake and a California king snake, which somehow also turned into a milk snake and a ball python. Uh, but you just, and it's not because she doesn't know how to or doesn't want to take care of them. It's usually because I'm already down here taking care of tarantulas that I just go ahead and take care of the snakes as well. So that's one less thing she's got to worry about. And, you know, we're not getting each other's way. Uh, but she does, you know, hold it and stuff like that, take care of it. Uh, but yeah, that, there's not much. Uh, it, it's on me <laughs> take care of all the tarantulas record all the videos edit all the videos let's see what we got here do you have any experience with the velvet spiders i don't i do not have any experience with those let's see jamie seymour says hi bud i love your channel you have inspired me to keep collecting and i take your advice for husbandry and care i've also added four regal jumping spider slings recently too thank you uh, well thank you for watching i appreciate that that is awesome um i i don't have any videos on the jumping spiders but i know there are a lot of people out there that do so uh you know there, there's plenty of places to get information uh but that's just that's one of those species it's uh i just don't have too much uh i don't have any so i can't record a video on something i don't have i guess that's what it really comes down to let's see alexander says uh, i'm getting my first tarantula tomorrow a gbb three quarter inch sling and uh, was wondering if cocoa fiber would be a good choice for substrate along with some forest moss yeah uh that's what i keep mine on my gbb sling is just on cocoa fiber like i do other different substrates or mixes for other species but trench the gbb from a tapelma sign of pubescence likes an arid environment and cocoa fiber is good for an arid environment uh you know even in the forest moss um i'm not sure exactly what that is uh, like if you're talking like sphagnum moss or uh, like that, you know, if it's if it's a dried kind of moss just for aesthetic purposes, that's cool. Um, it, I would uh, stay away from, I know that like my local pet store has moss that's growing, like live green moss that you got to like keep wet in an human environment for an enclosure. Um, like they use it a lot for like the dart frog enclosures. I would not suggest that uh, to be used in a GBV's enclosure just because it's going to dry out and die <laughs> like it's uh not not the gbb but the moss because they, they do like it they like it pretty dry so yeah if that's uh if you're just talking about like the dried sphagnum moss or green moss like that that'd be cool uh brian perez says richard have you ever bred any of your arachnids or insects for profit um not intentionally i'm not much of a breeder i definitely don't want to sell retail uh, i did breed some or i don't even say breed 
uh, have a communal of a couple different communals of scorpions and inevitably they have babies <laughs> and uh usually what i'll do is when uh, one of those species is having uh, you know has I, I find that she's got sp- uh scorplings on her back i remove her from the communal set her up in her own little enclosure and wait for those to come off her back and then cup them all up in their own little enclosures and i sent a hundred of those out to uh tanya at fear not tarantulas so she could sell them for me uh essentially it's like just like a wholesale deal i just sell them to her for like you know uh i don't even I don't, probably would appreciate i probably shouldn't put out the exact numbers but i sell them to her for a few bucks uh you know and a few bucks less than what she sells them for i guess would be a good way of putting it um but when you take into consideration uh the shipping and the packaging and the time and just the care and everything that goes in it's not really even for a profit <laughs> it's, it's just going back into the money i'm I'm pouring into this channel kind of like you know gets me out of the red a little bit more um, but it's not something that i've i see any kind of financial stability in or something that i'm like i've got another hundred and some scorpions over there in the nursery right now i'm going to be sending some out to her and send a few out to alex the tarantula haven since he sent me these tarantulas um but yeah yeah yeah, I definitely don't don't breed them and sell them for profit. It's more if I breed them and they it's successful, then I will sell them to someone that can sell them for profit, if that makes sense. Love your vids, bro. I just got my first three spiderlings, Tilicotl albulosum and Lociadora periavana. Awesome. Congratulations, Logan. Welcome to the club. It was awesome to have you. Mm-hmm. all right here's a good one i have seven brockies coming next week is there any major difference in husbandry between them i am assuming that you just got in on that very uh tempting offer that i saw i think it was fear not tarantulas had seven brockies seven different brocky pelma species for like 219 dollars and i kept looking at it like man that's a good deal i got it i'm gonna i'm gonna get in on that um but like every species of brocky pelma already have one usually like two or three of them like that just i shouldn't oh i shouldn't buy something just because it's a good deal like that's that's uh the cheapskate in me sometimes like i can't pass up that deal but sometimes you know you don't need it so you shouldn't spend the money on it uh but yeah they're uh, so essentially no like they're all pretty much the standard um especially those brocky pelmas like i can't think of any of them that have any husbandry requirements that would be different so they all could go in the same type of enclosure same type of substrate um, same type of feeding schedule they're just going to look different but their care and husbandry is essentially exactly the same uh, from my experience i should put a qualification on there i keep all of my rocky pelma species essentially the, exactly the same all right harley bray my for my grimmistola pulchra what size would be safe to stop spritzing and add a small water dish sorry i'm a newbie you actually inspired me to get one thanks love watching your channel thank you harley um it, th- like this enclosure uh I, I don't know what kind of size that you've got like i mean this is this is small um this is like my spiderling type enclosure i will put a water dish in this uh it really just depends on the size of the tarantula i i think you know very rarely do people have experiences with tarantulas dying from drowning in a water dish and when you do hear those i you never really know if it like it actually drowned in the water dish or just had a bad mold and fell in the water dish or if it died and just you know there's there's all kind of, we don't really know but logically you would think a trench would be able to float uh but at any rate um if you want to add a water dish you just gotta you know I, what i try to do is make sure the water dish is no wider than the leg span of the tarantula you know so if if it's only like you know a centimeter or two centimeters then just make sure it's like a half a centimeter or one you know what i mean like i've used uh legos like i just get like a small little lego turned upside down and fill it up with water you know especially like the the little flat thin one so it's just like a little debit see people use golf tees uh kind of cut the top of like the bottom of it off so it's just like the, the kind of concave top of a golf tee and use that tiny seashells I and mean, there's all kinds you get creative you know you can find a small water dish it's just it's a hassle to continually fill it up you know but once your trench is over about an inch or so it pretty much any kind of small little plastic uh lid is going to work so I, I hope that answers your question
Oh yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Missy says tattoo ink cups were great. Uh, yes, I would definitely. Uh, I've seen a lot of people do that. I've used a few myself as well. Um, now we've been doing this for like over two hours now, and I forgot my family's upstairs waiting for me to eat. So I'm going to have to wrap this up uh, here in a moment. Uh, but I, you know, I did want to remind you guys to uh, make sure that you uh, you check out the Bug Realms Fatal Fangs. Um, our fatal fangs 2 um i'm gonna put up on the screen again for those that have come in and didn't get to see it the first time uh but it's uh, it's it's going on right now or it's about ready to start it's going to be over on bug realms channel so if you're if you haven't subscribed yet be sure you go to uh bug realms on youtube and check out this fatal fangs competition there's all kinds of different youtubers that are going to be um submitting their clips and going head to head and kind of just working down the bracket to see who's going to come out the winner and then whoever wins the entire championship uh will be going head to head against me <laughs> and we're going to be uh putting now my best feeding clip against their best feeding clip and uh and uh yeah th th these are all the people that are going to be on so it it's uh bug realms i'll link it down below in the description once this uh live stream has ended if you want to check that out um what else was i going to say uh oh yeah the podcast that's coming up we got a uh that will be out this thursday you can check out my conversation with uh danny damon from keeper cards i did remove myself from the live stream that's not good uh i'll be talking to danny um actually if you guys if there's anybody still watching i can give you a little sneak peek maybe let me see if I can pull it up here. Uh, I got uh, I got a little bit of video. This is so cool that I can share my screen with you guys. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is like unedited raw video, but just some just some clips that uh, I, I made of his keeper cards. Uh, I know he's probably already in bed at the moment, but you know that's one. Uh, let's see, what is, what is this one? I never. I don't even know what it is. I'm gonna be showing you guys. But yeah, that's uh have a slow motion pan of all the different keeper cards you get so you can see that there's these are like all the species over here and and then this is like all the little kind of helpful ones but those are you know just just some small clips that are be that are going to be going in um the little podcast uh and that's there he is that's us talking so yeah it's all recorded ready to go and as you can see it is uh it, it's how long is it it's about two hours so yeah uh, and we talk about all kinds of stuff. It seems like every time we do one of these podcasts, um, I never intend for it to be controversial. I'm always like, uh, let, we're just going to have a discussion about these two or three, you know, topics and, and it'll be awesome. And inevitably, I mean, anytime you have a long form conversation, you're talking to somebody for more than half an hour, it, oh, it always seems to stumble into something controversial at some point. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, this happens here as well, but you know, it, it's, it was a lot of fun and, uh, I'm really excited. So I got that coming out with him. Uh, after that, we've got Russ from Aquarimax Pets and uh, Amy from Pet Rock and Roll. We, she and I actually got together. We recorded an entire podcast. It, it was well over an hour, maybe two hours. And I went to edit it and I had screwed it up so bad. I, I didn't, like I had a mic like this, but I wasn't, it wasn't turned on. Like it was turned on to where I could hear my headphones, but it wasn't turned on in recording software. Of like, And I usually do it in like double and triple, like, triplicate so i'm like recording two or three different programs at the same time and all of them was using the microphone on my laptop for some reason and not this microphone and the microphone on my camera any other camera any other microphone that would have been halfway decent and like chose the worst possible microphone that was a far far the farthest away that i was looking in a different direction of so it was it was crazy so i pretty much had to apologize and be like sorry amy we got to scrub that entire thing because i screwed it all up and uh hopefully she's still willing to get uh come in and come on the podcast again and we can record what she just said so i get to do it again yay yes so you know you guys you guys see it here first she has uh confirmed and or not confirmed she's already confirmed but she is committed to doing the podcast again even though i screwed it up so thank you amy for your patience and i appreciate it um heavy metal gentleman says i love your controversial chat makes a change from the same old stuff on youtube awesome yeah i mean it's 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 not something i like try to well i don't know if i want to say i try to avoid it 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna run for it. Like some people are like, yeah, I'm not even gonna talk about that topic because I don't want to pick a side or be polarizing or get people to unsubscribe or anything like that. Like, I mean, it's just opinions. We all got opinions and I, I share my opinion, he shares his opinion, and we did not uh, did not agree. <laughs> but you know, that happens. So it's it's cool um but anyways guys i gotta make dinner my wife can't get up she, she's like i don't know if you were watching the beginning of the podcast but like her toe they they cut it open and they broke it and reset it put a pin in and did all their kind of stuff to the bone and they're just pretty much like you can't walk you gotta keep your foot elevated for a week and then after that like she can't put any weight on it for like another four or five weeks so uh you know she's just stuck on the couch with her foot elevated <laughs> And it's probably hungry. And it's like, I wish you would wrap this up so I could get some dinner. <laughs> um, Dan Kaufman says, you're looking a little bit tired, my friend. You might want to get some good sleep when you are through. Love all your videos. Nice big glass of wine will help. Well, thank you, Dan Kaufman. I am very tired. Uh, as I said, I've been, I've been uh, a caregiver for my wife for the past week. And then today I, I had immunizations. I got two shots and, and they did some terrible things to my teeth. I'm still spitting blood. So I'm in a lot of pain and tired so i need to wrap this up and i want to thank all you guys so much for joining and hanging out it's been a lot of fun uh, i agree with dan i need sleep i got some serious bags under my eyes <laughs> and you guys uh you guys are awesome for watching and supporting thank you for everybody that came channel members today thank you to everybody that uh you know sent super chats and super stickers and, and all that stuff that was uh very cool and thanks for tarantula haven i can't stop uh i can't wrap up without saying thank you for these beautiful spiderlings i'm gonna have to get them moved into their new enclosures um it was a lot of fun hanging out with you guys be sure to check out the exotic pet collective um it's the, my other youtube channel or you know you can find the podcast anywhere the podcasts are up but that new podcast will be up this thursday so uh you know it'll be a lot of fun and uh i appreciate you all listening and your support and yeah thank you so much uh check the chat one last time before i go Yeah. All right. Goodbye, everybody. My tarantulas drink Kool-Aid. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you. Uh, thanks for your support, and I will uh, see you next Tuesday. All right. Bye.